The Whitecaps can play leapfrog this weekend in the USL standings if they can fend off an old mate. Will the recently departed Steve Kindle hold the Caps down, or will Vancouver climb over Montreal and into a tie with Rochester? The last one standing holds fifth place. Whitecaps, Rhinos, kickoff is next. Good evening everyone and welcome to Save on Foods Vancouver Whitecaps Soccer on Shaw TV. Just before we set up tonight's matchup, the entire Shaw crew and I would like to send out our best wishes to our camera operator Gallant Lai. Gallant can't be with us tonight. We just want to let you know that Gallant, we're thinking about you and we wish you a very speedy recovery. So with heavy hearts, the show does go on and it will be with mixed emotions that former Whitecap Steve Kindle takes to the pitch as a Rochester Rhino. The longtime Whitecap was released this past offseason. He was one of a group of veterans who were all let go after a championship season. But tonight will be less about getting reacquainted and more about playoff positioning. The Whitecaps trail the Rhinos by just three points for fifth place in the USL. For more on tonight's matchup, let's check in with our play-by-play -play crew of Peter Shad and Alan Arrington. Kristen, there's some extra incentive for the Whitecaps tonight. They'll want to avenge the 2-1 loss to Rochester here earlier this season, but a win by the Whitecaps tonight will put them on uh, level points with Rochester in the table. Yeah, I think a win will put them level with Rochester, and looking at the run-in from now until the end of the season, on paper at least, the Whitecaps seem to have an easier run-in with the teams that have to play, teams in the lower end of the division. But uh, it's nothing uh, certain. You've got to win those games to get the points. The Whitecaps are coming off that tremendous 2 0 win off Miami when uh, Charles BK scored a pair of really cracking goals. The uh, first one set up by Gordon Chin. And uh, you say often to throw your eyes at the ball. Here's well, a great example. First of all, it is a great ball in by Gordon Chin. But look at Charles BK here. I mean, he really lifts up and he means that. That's a lob into the back end of the net. That's not just getting your head in, but he does throw his eyes at the balls. That's a great finish. And look at this setup here from uh, the young winger. He's very, very quick. He sets BK up again and he makes no mistake and seals the game for the Whitecaps. Bit of a change in the formation tonight. West Knight will be at left midfield instead of uh, left back and that's actually good. He's a better crosser I think than Lyle Martin a little bit and he also has the long throw weapon. Well, I think he's more comfortable playing further up the field in all honesty, Peter. And I think Lyle Martin's more comfortable being a defender. And first and foremost, Lyle Martin is a defender but West Knight gives you that attacking options that he can get the ball served in the box. He can get good service in with his left foot. He has got a long throw in, but don't worry about Lyle Martin. He'll be getting forward as well. He loves to get forward with his pace. And I think now you've got two players on the left who can cross the ball. As for the Rochester Rhinos, a familiar face to Whitecaps fans who've been coming here for a while. Johnny Mignonger, who's been here as a Minnesota Thunder member and also as a Rochester player. Dangerous player, scored the winning goal in their last outing here at Swangard and creative but also a good finisher. He's a very good finisher and I think uh, the Whitecaps need to be on top of that tonight. If you give him three or four yards with the ball at his feet, he's going to have a shot. But I think with my, uh, with Pedjik and uh, Pozniak at centre-back, I think it's a lot tighter at the back and I think his chances are going to be limited. But he's somebody you've got to watch and uh, pay attention. You just saw Steve Kindle in that shot as well. There he is. And uh, let's have a look at Steve Kindle in his white cap days. And uh, what a fan favorite here at Swan. Uh, Steve has always days. been a, a great uh, player for the white caps. You know, I remember him back way back in the old 86s when he was starting out. He's been a terrific servant to the white caps over the years. A very competitive player. And, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll see a few fireworks tonight when Steve Kindle's involved around the ball. He's just a good character, and uh, it's good to see him back. Well, let's hear from Steve Kindle. He's standing by with Kristen Reed. Steve, it must be strange to be on the other side in the other locker rooms when you came to Swangard. What was the feeling for you? Yeah, it was a little bit strange to come in on the team bus and, uh, you know, uh, have a different uh, game day routine than usual for uh, for the stadium for me. So, um, you know, I'm sure uh, that's just the first uh, strange moment I'll have tonight, uh, going into warm up here and seeing some familiar faces and then, uh, and then uh, you know, being on the different, different side of the pitch uh, for the first time so um, yeah it'll be an exciting night but definitely a strange night as well. Were you expecting what happened this offseason or were you taken by surprise? Um, well I don't think uh, any of the guys were taken by su surprise um, you know we had uh, last year was a big adjustment year there was a lot of changes from staff to, to players and in any adjustment year you know things aren't gonna run perfectly smoothly um, you know, it was credit to the guys, though, that uh, and everyone involved, everyone did their job and just went out and played. And 
we were able, you know, not to have the so-called rebuilding year and, and put a championship, uh, you know, into the clubhouse. So, um, having said that, though, you know, the, it's been a little documented about uh, it not being a totally smooth uh, season, and uh, you know, we know when when it's like that that there might be changes. So, in that regard, it, it wasn't. Uh, I don't think anyone's overly shocked. Is there something that you want to prove out on the pitch tonight? Uh, not really anything different than any other game because, you know, really, um, you know, I know it's a, a unique situation, but in terms of proving things, I, I mean, I've played 11 years in front of these fans and, you know, they all know what I can do. And uh, I think when uh, they come out tonight, I, I don't think I'm going to surprise them with anything at my age and, <laughs> and how many times I've played in front of them. So no special tricks and uh, I'll just play my game and, you know, try and help the Rhinos this year uh, achieve their goal of winning a title. And, uh, you know, there's a certain set of strengths that I bring, and, and that's w what I'll stick to. Well, thank you for this, and good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. Steve Kindle returns to Swan Guard Stadium, but as a Rochester Rhino. Thank you for Whitecaps and Rhinos. Kickoff is coming up next. Making new friends is hard, really hard, but thankfully recycling is easy. Truck Accessories has a large selection of aftermarket accessories for trucks. Located at 430A 40th Avenue Northeast, Truck Accessories. be your passport to discovering Greek, German, and Asian cultures, along with many others. Explore the many multicultural channels available through popular dramas, hit shows, and current affairs from around the globe. Start your journey today with Shaw Digital TV by ordering any of our multicultural channels. Whitecaps soccer back on Shaw. The Whitecaps and Rochester Rhinos from Swangard Stadium. Pleasant night for the match. Good pitch conditions too as we look at the lineup starting with the Rochester Rhinos and the very familiar left back Steve Kindle wearing an all gold strip. How strange. And he's part of a very experienced back line that also includes assistant coach Brent Sancho, the TNT native John Ball who's been in the league for an eternity and a rookie well not rookie he's a young player but uh, number four Kenny Burtz who's been around with the uh, setup for a while under uh, the Rochester Rhinos up front uh, you saw there too that they have uh, Johnny Mignonger and Warren Oka the Whitecaps Jay Nolly of course the ever present in goal I mentioned off the top West Knight at uh, left midfield he's actually of course at right midfield and uh, it's Lyle Martin at right back. For the Rhinos in goal, it'll be Tim Melia. Scott Vallow's uh, the incumbent number one here, but it's uh, Melia who gets the start for the Rhinos. And Jay Nolly, of course, uh, has been the Whitecap goalkeeper from day one and minute one here this season. Carol Ann Chenard is going to blow the whistle tonight, and she'll have Andy Foster and Martin Reed helping her out with the referee's assistance. Peter Shad and Alan Arrington, the Whitecaps attacking the south side in the first 45 minutes, all in Umbro White and at Rochester all in gold as we get underway. Martin Nash with the captain's armband for the Whitecaps, and we found out this week that Martin had a pretty badly sprained ankle, and he's been playing through it for the last several games, which may explain a few things, and uh, he'll be back to his normal self pretty soon, I'm sure. Yeah, he wasn't at his best the last little while, and uh, obviously he limped off as well when he came off. So he has been nursing that injury, and let's uh, hope he's on the road to recovery, because I think he's critical to the Whitecaps, and Nash plays well. Uh, the team normally plays well, so he's the, you know, the engines and the uh, the passing from midfield. So we need to see better things from him. Danny Earls and Calvin winning that chase. West Knight with a nice little hurdle, and Calvin 
who has hunkered down alongside Nash in center midfield. First touch for Steve Kendall to an opposite number eight, Knight, and Sean Pedgick up to Haber. Through ball, well played. Sancho will play it down to the deck. Kendall will keep it in for Burtz, and Burtz sends it through midfield. Nice intervention there by Calvin, who stretches out. He's honoring Ramadan right now, but he uh, promised he's not fasting on game days, which would make it pretty tough for a player. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem when they do that. I had a player playing for my university last year in Ramadan, and he was uh, he was very poor the first month of September because of that, and he wasn't eating and not drinking, and it did affect his performance, so uh, it's something that they have to address. Anzu Ture with a good steal on a square ball at midfield. Shimmy's at the edge of the 18, gets outside, carries on to the penalty area. Can he get a cross in? Does whip it back, and it's knocked away by Sancho. And that'll be a white cap throwing on the far side as uh, Toure stepped up and read it nicely. He had a nice little moment with Johnny Minyonga before the game, the two Liberians, as it was uh, Nurse who played a poor square ball. He was the fellow who scored the opening goal against the run of play in the 2-1 Rochester win here in their last meeting this season. West Knight into the penalty area. Sancho again for Pozniak. And Peter, it looks like uh, West Knight is lined up at right back. And actually, Lyle Martin's playing right, right. Now, I wonder if that's going to be switching all night long or whether they've actually uh, been, you know, told to play in those positions. But West Knight is definitely playing in the right back spot. And Lyle Martin's in the penalty area, so he's playing further forward. So we'll keep an eye on them too and keep you posted. They are so interchangeable as we have our first Steve Nash Sports Club corner of the night. And Martin Nash will go over to take it from the far side, minute number three. And set plays is something the Whitecaps would love to cash in on as they headed to the stretch drive here. A good curling ball in, punched away by Melia. And then it was Osniak launching himself at the ball over the top for a goal kick. Well, I think Chris Posner would like to have that one again. Uh, it was a great chance, a good delivery in the corner, and a punch out, not as clean as it likes to be. Here we see the delivery. It's a good delivery. Goalkeeper punches, and I think Posniak's throwing his eyes at the ball as I keep saying that, but he's got to keep that one on target. He's got a chance to score, but good start there for the Whitecaps. First chance of the game. A second ball on the park at the moment as we have a look at Tim Melia, who... Uh, Last year only managed to get in one game, but has uh, featured a little bit more for Darren Tilly this season. Scott Vallow, uh, the goalkeeper the Whitecaps managed to beat at Paytech Park in 06 when they won the championship, their first USL 1 championship. And Melia sends a long diagonal ball into Whitecap territory. It's off and out as Oka sees it off. Warren Oka in your screen there who played with the Atlanta Silverbacks for a number of seasons. And West Knight with the throw-in as he sends it down the line. Little flick by Charles Bique, who's stuck on nine goals in all competitions for the season. And Rochester with the throw. Steve Kindle likely to take this. Steve Kindle still the technical director of the Dunbar Soccer Association. Uh, his son Ben and wife Sarah did not accompany him to Rochester, but he uh, had such a, a brief spell, really. That's why he waited so long to sign. Uh, but certainly a lot of friends of his here in the ground tonight, and including members of the Dunbar Soccer Association, the club which Marcus Haber played for. So it's quite a Dunbar correct connection here tonight as Zay Roberto, another former Whitecap, sends it forward to Mignogre. Nice little turn at the edge of the Whitecaps area. Through ball. Flag stays down. Andrew Greger in the box. Good sliding tackle by Martin Nash. And the Whitecaps skipper perhaps saving an opportunity there as Andrew Greger, who's another familiar face, darted in. Yeah, that looked a little bit, uh, I, I, I thought he was a mile offside when he got there, but obviously uh, Martin Reed's got a better view than I have and kept his flag down. So that would be a good tackle to prevent the shot, and uh, here we have the corner, but he looked a little bit offside from where I'm sitting. And Gregor will take the corner, left-footed, good height, and Haber's the first man there, up he goes, and follows up with a little touch into midfield, too far for Nash, and Gregor will let it run. Interesting to see uh, Steve Kindlett left back, for Rochester and uh, Lyle Martin who looks like he's pushed on to play wide on the right against him. I just wonder how many battles they've had over the years that they've been together at the White Cap during training when they've been up against each other. So they'll know each other very well. As, uh, you know, there's, there's going to be no secrets between those two, but it could be a really good battle between them tonight. John Ball up to take the throw. The Rochester veteran hurls it into the box and a good throw. And Jay a Nolly great throw in that is, Peter. That's almost like a corner kick. And uh, Jay Nolly did well to come out and, and collect that amongst a little bit of traffic. But that is a weapon that they should, uh, you know, they should be taking a better advantage of. Kimmy Burtz and Brent Sancho. Sixth minute. 
Jose Roberto. And again, Toure almost stealing in and stealing that ball as Danny Earls tried to get a touch and Kendall hammers it into Whitecap territory. Posniak will nod it into touch. As we look at a former Aston Villa reserve player, Danny Earls, who also uh, played for the youth team in his native Ireland, as he throws backwards to Kendall. And Zay Roberto. A white cap after coming from Montreal in the Bob Lilly regime. Sancho diagonal ball. In goes Earls on his left foot. Sends it back post. And nodded away by Pedjik. And then Kalfin dances with it in midfield. Knight trying to find Martin, but it's Earls who slips in. Plays it square for Nurse. And Nurse for ball. Blows down by Haber, so he plays it back to Sancho, and the ball will be swung wide to Kimball. How many times have we seen him applying this tough line for the White Caps? Jose Roberto stepped on the ball as he won it. Calvin did well to pass one. And then Kendall was fouled by Lyle Martin, and right away Kendall has a word with Lyle Martin. He will shrug him off and, and play the fireworks with begin. Stevie's involved there, but a little bit of a, a challenge and a foul, but uh, really, Stevie, you shouldn't be reacting as that early in the game. Give us another 10 minutes. But uh, that's a fireworks for Stevie again. A passionate guy and uh, really puts everything he's got into the game. And the first free kick for either side is Lyle Martin given the foul. <laughs> and Andrew Gregor, who can do a lot of magic from a dead ball situation, and that's a long ball played on target. He had a look up and saw Nolly off his line. Andrew Gregor's had a lot of joy here at Swangard Stadium over the years with uh, Portland Timbers and Seattle Sounders. As Knight finds Martin. Got it past Kimball. DK. Lyle Martin wanted it back as Nurse turns aside Calvin. Good steal there by Pozniak. And Zuture. Through ball for Haber. Ran past everybody. And Melia will collect here in minute number nine. No score. Swangard Stadium. Save on foods. Whitecaps soccer on Shaw. Just a little bit tight coming through the middle there. I think we need to open the game up a little bit and get Ansu Tori a little bit wider. Get him involved in the ball. He's got good feet. He's got good pace. But the tighter you get in towards the uh, the penalty area, I think there's a lot more players around you to, get, uh, to defend against you. So give us a bit more width, and I think you get more joy from that. Now look out as Earl steals into the Whitecap penalty area. Trying to dance around. West Knight did very well until Calvin stepped in. And now Lyle Martin will send a right-footed bullet up the field. And look out, here's the pace of Marcus Haber. Gets around Sancho, but maybe used a hand to pull him down. And despite being about 20 to 30 yards away, Carol Ann Chenard charging Haber with the foul there. Let's see if we maybe get a closer look at that one as he went down fairly easily, Alan. Surprised to see uh, Rochester caught a little bit square at the back like that. And uh, you'd think the centre-back would come up and win that challenge and just head it away to safety, but uh, caused a little bit more problems than it should have done, in my like. And I thought Haber did well to battle for that. And a little bit unlucky to give a foul away. Well, and if you watch the replay there, it was completely evident that he didn't touch him. And now here's BK, 1v1. What a great run from BK. Haber, first touch, let him down, and out comes Melia. And so it hasn't been the greatest start for Marcus Haber. You know, Peter, we, you hear people talk about great runs and, and uh, all the time in the game, and a lot of people don't understand what they are. That was a terrific run from Charles BK there. He's just come into the space, and he's coming late. The ball's arrived, then he arrives. He can't be offside, and uh, he played a great ball through for Marcus Haber, and uh, Haber should have done a little bit, a bit better with that, but what a great run by Charles BK. John Ball off his shoulder. Anzu Turi goes to close. Johnny Mignonger checking off his man Nash. Comes inside for Nurse. Zay Roberto will switch play for Stevie Kindle. Actually, that was Andrew Gregor who played that ball back. Kindle down the line nicely for Earls, who's hugging the touch line. And he plays it off of West Knight and out for another Rhino corner from the near side. Stevie Kindle making that overlapping run. Coming on the inside of the fullback. Trying to get the ball played in behind him and didn't quite get it there. He's, uh, he's trying to get the cross in, but... Little touch in, might have got Stevie Kindle away. We've seen that so many times over the years. But fairly good defending from the Whitecaps there. They've, they've obviously stopped the ball getting played into the box. But a corner is the result, and uh, still not quite out of danger. Johnny Mignonger right-footed from the near quadrant. As he sends it to the back post. Balls for Zay Roberto. 
couldn't get it down flat quickly enough, but found Mignonger. Top left-hand corner of the penalty area. Nice give and go with Gregor. Mignonger puts it in the danger area. Gregor with a hit, and it took a deflection, and Nolly had to knock it aside, and I don't think he was happy with Hedgick for getting a touch on that. And they're a little bit fortunate there. Is a nice little give and go with uh, Mignonger and Gregor in the white cap box. Yeah, they are a bit fortunate. That's the best chance of the game up to now. And uh, I thought Jane Nolly saw that a bit late and uh, got it round the post for the corner. But a good little one-two and Mignonger getting in right behind the, the defence of the white cap, causing some problems there. And here's Mignonger once again. Another good ball played in. Punched clear, two-fisted from Nolly. John Ball on the end of this. Wide it goes to Zay Roberto. Inside for Nurse. Nurse trying to get outside. Rolls it back. And Zay Roberto into the penalty area. And down on the box is Warren Oka, who looks like he may be hurt. So Jay Nolly throws it away and gives us a chance to remind you of the Whitecap soccer camps. A great way to see the kids see Whitecap players up close and personal. Whitecap's youth soccer camps, where players make special appearances on the last day of camp. Whitecaps Youth Soccer Camps are on now throughout the Metro Vancouver area, Vancouver Island, and the Okanagan. And for more details, it's whitecapsfc.com slash camps. As Warren Oka is on the deck, we'll have a look at the collision here after the Minyager corner as he sent it right into the heart of the Whitecaps box. It's a great punch from Jay Nolly. He's come, he's done his job, he's in traffic. He's given the punch, and uh, I don't know if he's got a bit of a dead leg there, as I call him, but they call him a Charlie horse over here. I think he might have took a knee to the thigh, and struggling there he might have the way he landed could landed. be the way he landed as well he's got the spray on we can't really see from here I'll try and get the binoculars on it might be his ankle as well but he took them certainly took a bit of a clatter from jay nolly as jay came to punch it i'd like to say hello to the uh, rochester fans who are watching in on usl live are you a bmo ultimate fan log on to bmosoccer.com for your chance to tickets to the whitecaps game on september 13th BMO is a proud sponsor and loyal fan of Vancouver Whitecaps FC. And a little bit of sad news to pass on to the, uh, the fans watching. We lost a good one today with Bill Village, who passed away this morning. Bill was a season ticket holder with the Vancouver Whitecaps since day one and uh, never missed a game. And uh, our condolences to the family, uh, a wonderful family, the Village family. Ron Village was involved with the Whitecaps, uh, Bill's son, many, many years ago. And a uh, great loss for us today. So my condolences to the Village family. Good shout, and we used to see him. He sat right down there. Right maybe. down there, I can see the empty seats. Always had the best seats here at Swanger, and that's what happens when you're a lifelong season ticket holder, as Danny Earls tries to get around West Knight, Steve Kindle there, with former Whitecap teammate Zay Roberto, and then Kenny Burt's left footed into Whitecap territory. Oka back on, and looking to be okay as it's Pedgick seeing that one off. Rochester throw. Darren Tilly, another former Whitecap, who's the manager here at Rochester. Off his bench for the first time. Earls. Very busy legs and wins yet another corner. Earls just looks like a typical English winger, doesn't he? I think he's Irish, by the way. I shouldn't uh, insult him with that remark. <laughs> but he looks like a good little winger, a little jinky winger that likes to get at people. Nice to see that again. I think it's out of the game, and we need to bring that back. Mignonger, oh, good move around Calvin again. Whips it through, dangerous ball on the outside of his right foot. Here's Zay Roberto trying to get the cross back in. Off of the backside of Pozniak, Charles BK way back. And a nice little layoff for Toure, who's just happy to get it out. Well, Peter Maniago's impressed already, hasn't he? He's had two little forays in there, in behind the fullback, and uh, caused some problems. He's been dangerous every day he's got on the ball. He needs to be a little bit uh, more tightly marked and a bit more special care and attention paid to him. He could hurt us tonight if you're not. West Knight back and puts it straight into midfield where Nash beaten to it by Nurse. Osniak follows up. Toure with a challenge against Roberto. And then Nurse plays it down for John Ball, who helps it diagonally right into the chest of Lyle Martin. Away he goes. And Lyle Martin's running past everybody here. He's got Haber wide. Good ball through. Haber on the deck. And the penalty spot where Ball knocks it away, left-footed right to Whitecap coach Tater Torderson. Yeah, not the greatest delivery in from Marcus Haber there. It needed to be in the into the path of uh, Charles Beakley, who was just caught a little bit in front. And again on that, he's done that, he's done quite well to get up there and get across in. I think there needs to be more players in the box to be zooming in and giving more options. Square throw in by West Knight to change his possession here as John Ball plays it inside for Andrew Gregor. Uh, Knight just left the throw and a bit short for Nash there a moment ago. And now Rochester with a throw in a white cap territory. 
Well, certainly Rochester have come to play tonight. They've not come to sit back and defend. Uh, they've, they've had a good start and probably had the better of the play up to now, uh, a bit more than the Whitecaps. Uh, there's a long way to go yet, but they've certainly came and uh, uh, set the stall out. They've come to play. They've got some decent players on the team, and I think what the Whitecaps need to do is step it up and get the midfield players involved a little bit further forward. Like I say, that cross from Haber, I think midfield players need to get in the box as well to try and get on the end of things. You're watching the Whitecaps and Rochester on Save on Foods Whitecaps Soccer on Shaw Quarter in an hour gone. Our next game is a Wednesday night match against the expansion Austin Aztecs. That'll be a 7.30 kickoff on Wednesday evening. Love to have you for that one as Tori with a little overlapping ball for Takaharano floats it into the box. BK shaped up and in came Lyle Martin. It never turned into a shot. It's a throw it on the far side. And You'll have to uh, think about that one. These two teams met uh, a few weeks ago in Rochester and the Whitecaps with uh, maybe a shock result uh, given how they were playing. A 3-1 win in a place where they hadn't had a whole lot of joy. And so Rochester, I'm sure, has that in the back of their minds as uh, these teams try to finally sort out a home victory for one of these teams. As the Whitecaps would love to win another game on the trot here as the season starts to fade into fall as Steve Kindle cuts inside on Martin. Kindle on the deck for Andrew Gregor. Overlapping is Zay Roberto. Gregor takes a dive, and that's not unusual. And West Knight goes back to Sean Pedgick on the deck for Lyle Martin. Gregor getting up slowly. And Marcus Haber off his chest. Flag stays down for the moment. Now it does. Yeah. He was offside. And the linesman quite rightly uh, holding his flag down to see if Charles BK is going to join in the play. Once he does, his uh, flag came up for the offside. But uh, Andrew Gregor uh, went down a little bit easy there. We've got another player down as well. The drop line flies on the field there. But Andrew Gregor is always dangerous. He's a bit of a character as well. And uh, always somebody that can uh, hurt you to give him a bit of space as well. He's very good on set plays. Scored a few goals here against the Whitecaps. So uh, he's another one. Andrew Gregor, he played very briefly here. And uh, he's been in a few clubs in the USL. Well, Oka is down, and that should be it for Warren Oka, who uh, started up front. But I already see that there's uh, some activity on the bench there until he was looking on a moment ago. And it looks like uh, Errol McFarlane uh, may be joining the squad as Oka may not be able to continue. You know, I think uh, when he's came down, I think he's jawed his knee because they're working on his knee. And uh, as he's came down for that challenge with Jay Nolly. While I'm talking there, Peter, a great chance of breakaway for uh, Rochester and Jay Nolly having to come up big and, and make a save just to keep the score down to 0-0. Zero, zero. The substitute is being made. Andrew Greger was the man who broke through, and there's a really dodgy back pass and good, brave goalkeeping from Jay Nolly. So they have made the substitution. Uh, Warren Oka is out. Errol McFarland is in another TNT native. As the ball is sent into Whitecap territory, and it has been Rochester with the better opportunity so far as Steve Kindle. Down the line for Earls. Knight. And then Jordy Lyle with Steve Kindle there. And another Rochester throw. Darren Tilly wants his teammates to uh, push it back. Tilly was certainly a fan favorite here at Swangard Stadium as Earls again cuts to the outside. Very busy, hard working Earls. Uh, every time he's got near the ball, he, he just looks like he has a good appetite, wants to work hard. And uh, it would be difficult to mark him. He's a very quick, uh, good footed player. And uh, West Knight's going to have his work cut out to keep him in check. I'm not sure if Tater Tortorson's happy with the first 20 minutes of play here at Swangard Stadium. They have generated one opportunity. But their opposition have uh, created several others. A corner count up to four to one so far here in the first half. Haber again in a challenge. Kenny Burtz off the legs of Gregor and now Mignonger on the chase with Takaharano to nod down. And Kozniak plays it wide for Toure. Toure did well to dance around two gold jerseys, but that's a giveaway for Mignonger. And his ball is cut out by Kalfan. Lazar Kalfin to the near side for Lyle Martin. First touch let him down, and Steve Kindle was right there. Danny Earls with handballs not given. Away he goes to the edge of the box, into the penalty area, still carrying on. And finally, the Whitecaps sort that out, but he's been quite a handful. The Rochester left winger, through ball, 
Haber stays on. Andy Foster's flag stays down. Marcus Haber charging into the edge of the penalty area. Kenny Burns with a shoulder. And into the box. Balls for Torre at the edge of the area. Thought about laying it down for Calpin. Now he does lay it for Nash, who swerves it wide at the far post. Maybe the Whitecaps' best penetration in the opening minutes. Yeah, Marcus Haber did very, very well on this, pushing forward, driving into the box where it makes him a little bit more difficult to challenge because one little false tackling, he could be down, it could be a penalty. But Haber, he's just a great drive in the box, great ball pulled back, and it actually deserves better. And I thought uh, Jory could have done a little bit more. He's unsure what to do there. Nash comes in with a good strike, but a top target. Marcus Haber, what a great run, and uh, for all the young players in, out there watching, it's great to see players get in the box and take control. It's funny because in the game earlier this season between these two teams here at Swangard, the Whitecaps were absolutely all over Rochester, had wave after wave of pressure. Rochester scored virtually on their first opportunity, a corner when Chris Nurse scored off a header. Then Johnny Mignogra with a brilliant goal made it 2-0. The Whitecaps did have a penalty that was saved. I believe it was Torrey who had his... A shot saved by Scott Ballow, and then uh, Dever Orgill scored his first goal for the Whitecaps to make it close. Here it's the other way around, though. It's been Rochester for the most part that have had the joy. Save for that last opportunity by Nash as Petrick sends a diagonal ball looking for Pique. Backing into Sancho. Ball will just let it run out. And it's going to be a corner. Well, BK's not giving up there, is he? He's trying to shield that ball and shepherd it off the field, and uh, BK's having none of that. He's worked hard, and the big thing when you're doing that is it's very easy to try and get in and be up with as good as you can and foul people. He's not fouled. He's done a great job just closing down and not giving a foul away. Steve Nash, Sports Club corner for Martin Nash, whips it in. Haber with a flick, and it just went all the way through to the other side and out. The flag is up. Bosniak tried to save that one. Haber just got a little glance on it at the edge of the six-yard box. As Nash and Torrey exchange ideas. Need to check a match score or find out who's on top of the goal scoring charts or catch up on the latest news. Do it all by logging on to USLsoccer.com, the league's official website, USLsoccer.com, play with passion. As the Good. ball is sent into Whitecap territory. Earls again. Has a go from distance. Jay Nolly had it covered at full stretch. It's wide for a goal kick, but Earls is certainly proving his worth here in the first yeah, 25 he's, he's minutes. He's been quite impressive, hasn't he? I mean, you can see him when he got that ball. It took a bit of a bounce, and he set it up for a, a bit of a volley there, and uh, he's not afraid to have a pop. He's uh, quite a lively, busy player, and uh, again, he's, he's caught the eye tonight, certainly by me. Uh, when you are a part of a magnificent club such as Aston Villa. Well, behave yourself, Peter. Kenny Burtz nods it back to his goalkeeper who hasn't a whole lot of do. To Melia. Sends his teammates forward. Uh, Rochester will play in Portland. They lost to Portland. In fact, they're uh, three games without a win here, the Rhinos are, and have to go into Portland, which really has had an amazing season, a record-setting season in USL 1. Uh, steal at the edge of the area, Andrew Greger. Right-footed ball off of Hirano and out for the Rhinos' fifth corner of the first 25 minutes. And Andrew Greger involved again. He's a bit of a handful, Andrew Greger. He's, uh, you know, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve and causes some problems. Here he is on the corner kick, and he's got a great left foot. Knocks a great corner in. Lots of jostling in the box as Brooks joins the fray. It's Haber, though, who's defending that near post. He'll send it off and out into the east side seats. John Ball, who has the long throw from the far side. Nice little flick. McFarland has advanced there. And now DK, who had his shoulder pulled back, finds Haber on the trot against Sancho. Haber, good step over. Can he keep it in, though? It just ran too far. And the Whitecaps will have to settle for another goal kick. Here in minute number 25, Whitecaps nil, Rochester Rhinos nil. Save on foods, Whitecaps soccer on Shaw with Peter Shad and Alan Arrington. And the Rochester goalkeeper not at any hurry to get the ball back in play here. Southsiders egging him on. As the Whitecaps attacking the south side here in the first half. McFarland. The little flick. Darren Tilly not too impressed with the linesman's decision there. He thought it was a Rochester throw, but 
for what it is for the White Cup. BK and Kindle. Gregor let it run. McFarland touches down for Gregor. Sidesteps Calvin. Then Nurse. Ball dropping off. Takes it wide. Benyonger on the run. Edge of the box. McFarland appeals for handball again. And the Whitecaps do sort it out with West Knight. Back to Jay Nolly. And this time the back pass was strong enough. And Sancho will nod it down. And Nurse plays it for ball. The field's in uh, good condition again, but there are a few uh, brown patches on the field, and I'm not sure whether that's lack of drainage or a little bit of wear and tear, but uh, it's still in, in very good playing condition. And uh, when you get on there, just it's inviting. You want to play. It's such a good surface to play on Swan God Stadium. The weather we've had, the heat and the sunshine, obviously is uh, going to have an effect unless it's watered regular. And it looks like they've missed a few spots. Nice little take over there between Martin and West Knight. Earls pokes it back for Kendall and he hammers it forward. That's going to run all the way through to Jay Nolly. With a deep rooted 85 year history in the sport, Umbro is the longest standing football brand in the world, headquartered in Manchester, England. Umbro supporting many of the world's best teams, leagues, and players. For more information on how you could wear Umbro, www.umbro.com. Whitecaps with a throw in, taken by Torre, back for Hirano. Tried to play it inside for Nash. There's Kalfin. There's our Kalfin. Sidestepping Zay Roberto, who's a relentless tackler in the center of Darren Tilly's midfield. Nice little touch from Nash for Hirano. White cap number 22, 18 yards up. Pretty tight quarters for Anzu Turi. And again, it's Mignonger who will relieve some pressure. McFarland back for Zay Roberto. And Steve Kindle spreads wide left. A little bit of pressure there from Charles BK, but for the most part, Rochester looks pretty comfortable on the ball. A very big reversal from the, the way this game unfolded the last time these two teams met here at Swangard. I think tonight, Peter, the Whitecaps, if they're guilty of anything, is lack of movement. I think it's just a bit static at times and uh, a bit more movement off the ball in all areas just makes it easier and gives you more options to pass the ball to. And I just think it's a bit static. It's a bit... Uh, too predictable and again more movement causes more problems for the players depending it BK got there ahead of Sancho John ball underneath Ooh, that touch let him down and the Whitecaps are going to get a corner as Andy Foster corner, yes so they'll get a bit of a gift set piece opportunity here John Ball's not happy about that but Carol Ann Chenard was there and so was Andy Foster as all the Whitecaps substitutions are off the bench and we are anticipating another Steve Nash Sports Club corner from the far side Third of the first half for Martin Nash. Well, they've certainly got enough height in there with BK and Haber. And uh, Lyle Martin's no slouch here. Posniak's up there, Pedgick. And it's Pedgick who finally got the head on it. And he was just underneath it. It's over and out. They've not quite got the corners right, the white caps. The delivery's a bit uh, sporadic. It's, it's up and down. And uh, that one wasn't as bad as, as some of them I've seen, but uh, still, it's not a great ball in to get the, the strikers on. It's got to be paid in for me with a, as much pace as you can and not too high. That's a better ball for a forward. The higher and the longer it's in the air, I think the defender's got more of a chance. But the runs as well, the runs have to be right. It's all got to mesh together and they've all got to get you know, all the timing right and then you get goals from it. They're just a little bit off on that. Over the last few seasons, they've never really been outstanding at the set place, you know. And uh, I'm showing the age here, but I remember way, way back in the old White Caps days when all Alan Hinton was playing. Every time they got a corner, it seemed to score a goal because his delivery was so good. Bob Lenarduzzi flicking on at the near post, and uh, Trevor Weinbach, uh, Roger Kenny, and Kevin Hector coming at the back post. But uh, those days are long, long gone. White Caps will get a throw at midfield, and Tater Torderson has a number of options as Darren Tilly watches in disgust. And. Uh, and that was easy to spot. Only one hand though. Simon Thomas is the backup to Jay Nolly. Marco Retta will be available from the back as well as Mason Trapper. Terrell Burgess, who can swing in a pretty good corner, is on the bench alongside Gordon Chin. Kennel Versailles, the uh, central midfielder, and Randy Edwini Bonsu. I'm sure we'll see him as the youngster really made an impression last year. Virtually his first touch of the game took him around. 
<laughs> the Miami player. John Polito and set up Charles BK for the goal that sealed it off as Danny Earls has switched sides now to the far side. Andrew Greger has moved over to the left and Martin Nash will direct the ball to Lyle Martin. Nice little ball down for Calvin. 1v1 with Zay Roberto who got there first. Did well to keep it in and now it does go out. West Knight with the throw. Wanted to take it quickly. Charles BK drifting into the corner. And BK back to goal. Knight top of the penalty area. Haber, good first touch. Trying to get around Sancho. Goes for a tumble. Appeals. Not given though. Bernard just waved it off. Pedjik. Right foot a diagonal ball straight to Danny Earls. And away he goes. With a little bit of room to work with ahead of him. McFarland, little layoff for Gregor. Calpin with a foot in. And Andrew Gregor once again. Earls. 1v1 with Hirano. Left footed ball into the penalty area. Mignonger drifting across. Just a little bit of a nudge. And that gives us a chance to check in with the Icelandic tactician. Tater Tortorsen standing by with Christian Reed. Thank you, Peter. The Rhinos came out on the attack. How have you felt about your team's response? Well, we are struggling still to get the control on the game. You know, we we have had some good uh, attacks, some good chances, and but but well, we definitely do not control the game. So I just hope that uh, we can we can more and more get into it and and, uh, and keep control on it. Good luck. Thanks for this. Thank you, Peter. Kenny Burtz and Andrew Greger tried to find McFarland on the deck. And it hasn't been one of the most eventful first halves we've seen at Swangard. Just one substitution, basically. You're right. I think both teams are really stretching. There's a lot of room to play in between. It's not been a tight, compact game with a lot of good challenges and closing down. There's a lot of open space to play. And I think to take advantage of that, again, I think the Whitecaps have a little bit more movement about them. I think they'd, they'd have a little bit more success, but it's very static and it's very predictable where they're playing. But the more movement again, the more problems you cause to defenders. That was good movement there by Torre, who cuts it across, and Melia diving in the six-yard box to cut that one out. But you, you talked just about movement there, and Anzu Torre just continued on his run and basically set up an opportunity. And we've seen a couple of times here where Whitecaps forwards have run at Rochester defenders and caused some problems too. You talked about the, the gaps between the two back lines. As away goes Mignonga. Earls camped out wide right. Cuts inside of Hirano, who got a good shoulder charge in. But the very busy legs of Earls finds Mignonga. Cuts to his left. Still in the penalty area. Here's Earls once again and just puts it over the crossbar. As Nolly was happy to see that one go over his fingertips. But again, Johnny Mignonga at the heart of the problems. Johnny Mignonga and Earls as well. I think Earls is really... Uh up to play tonight. I don't know what uh, Darren Tilly's had to say to him before the game, but he's absolutely shown up. Now he's back on the left again, and he's gone from left to right, and he's back to left again, but uh, he certainly is a handful. He twists and turns. He's quite effective, and I think he needs to be mocked a little bit tighter when he gets on the ball. He's moved back over to the left now. Andrew Greger outside of him. Zay Roberto down for Kindle. And a handball against West Knight. We haven't seen Steve Kindle make one of his patented overlapping balls or runs. That time he did well to pick out Ball, who's deep, cut it back, and a good sliding tackle by Posniak sees that ball off and out for yet another Rochester corner. Good quick thinking from Stevie Kindle there. Trying to catch the weight caps a little bit uh, sleeping at the back and did that for the most part. Great ball in for the far player on the right wing and uh, a bit of a chance there, giving a the corner away. Andrew Greger's fourth corner unofficially take some time to adjust the shin guards. Anzu Turi there to close down. It's a short for Mignogna. Then back for Gregor. Serves it up and back it goes straight out. Another corner. Minute 35. And Rochester and Darren Tilly will be very pleased with those first 35 minutes, you'd have to think. Well, away from home, again, they, they've come to play. They've not sat back and defended, looking for the break, like some teams do when they play on the road. I think Rochester have uh, obviously done the homework and uh, know what Vancouver's about. And they've come and rolled their sleeves up and got at them. This time it is into the box, and Nolly with two fists there. It'll fall again for Gregor. The Rochester number 12 with a nice change of pace. 
But good defending by the Whitecaps. Torre back to support. And he just hammers into midfield. The Whitecaps flood out quickly. John Ball square for Earls. Another diagonal ball. And again, it's Andrew Greger beaten to it by Hirano. And now Torre with a little bit of room to work inside Whitecap territory. He plays a diagonal ball for Lyle Martin. Up goes Steve Kendall. Nice little touchdown there by Lyle Martin. And Wes Knight able to go for a run. He's got Calvin inside, but Calvin was ahead of the play. And now it's a counterattack the other way as Mignonger shimmies and lays it square for Kindle. And that ball goes off and out. And it'll be a white cap throw. Lyle Martin to take. Nash. Early ball nicely played for Anzutori. Can he run at ball? Let's see what he can do. Gets to the outside of ball. Carries on his run, tries a shot that's blocked straight away. Earls was there to nip in and play it backwards for ball. He sends it into midfield where Hirano camps out. Two white caps there, and they'll come up with it. Rochester defending quite well there, preventing uh, Tory from getting it across. All the shot in, blocking everything they've done. Good defending, getting close enough that the player can't uh, do anything dangerous, has to play it back. Jay Nolly. Up comes Kenny Burtz. Neither he nor BK could win it, but West Knight did. And Haber beaten away by Kindle. Trouble, trouble, and Posnian. Zay Roberto. Andrew Greger. And then Nurse will touch it down for the skipper and co-coach Brent Sancho. He's got enough caps for TNT to make a very nice resume. Back it goes to Melia. 38th minute. Best opportunities, you have to say, are, or at least went to the team in gold as it's off and out for a white cap throw. And did you know the club runs many of its community programs through the White Caps Foundation? This year, the White Caps Foundation granted 80 white cap camp scholarships with a little bit of help from their partners, the Boston Pizza Foundation. For more information on the White Caps Foundation initiatives, whitecapsfoundation.org. Here, Martin Yash uh, yelling instructions to Charles BK to drop off a little bit as John Ball retreats to the track and will send in a long throw by the looks of it. Gregor. Whipped in. Jay Nolly with a good shout and comes straight off his line, rolls it to Haber. I make that West Knight who steps inside Kindle. Two number eights. Calvin almost gave it away there, but Pedgick is there to clean up. And Kindle with an effective little chest down for Zay Roberto. Square ball for Nurse. Good spin. And now Gregor. He's got John Ball scampering down the right flank. 1v1 with Hirano. Ball, right-footed ball, pelted in. Good diving header away. Only as far as Andrew Gregor. Top of the box. But that's Posniak once again. Nice little layoff there from Calfan as Posniak steps forward. Look out. 3v2. Chris Posniak slides it through. And Haber's going to have to chase to keep this one in play. Whitecaps flooding forward. Marcus Haber against Kenny Burtz. And Burtz won that battle. Danny Earls, and he plays it wide. Now it's a counterattack the other way for the men in gold. Posnet with a great run forward there and getting it wide to Haber. Should have done a little bit better with the cross. Charles Beaky waiting in the box, waiting and desperate to get the ball anywhere near him, but uh, to no avail, no cross comes in. BK. BK pulled down. That'll be a free kick as Kenny Burtz. I don't like to see that, Charles, asking for cards. I just don't like to see that. I think uh, the referees should uh, get together. If somebody's asking for a card for another player, I think they should be booked. I just don't like to see that. Let the referee do the job. It might warrant a card. I think it's a foul. And it might even need a card, but I don't like to see players asking for it. And Tater Torreson having a go at Carol Anchenard. The fourth official is over there, Maurizio Navarro. You're right, and I think that at some point you're going to see that. FIFA will institute that if you. you know, and I, and I'm not disagreeing. I'm not saying it shouldn't be a yellow card. It probably should. But I just don't like to see players asking for it. I think they should do their job and let the referees do their own. It's a Fabrizio Romano, by the way, the fourth official. As in goes BK trying the audacious over the head effort here in minute number 41. Down he goes, up he gets. Still nil nil. 
<laughs> Charles BK looking for a hand up there from the, the Rochester centre back, but uh, no such luck. I think he just walked back and let him go. Well, the game needs a goal. I think if we get a goal, I think it'll be a lot more lively as well. Look at BK there, it's a little bit Roy of the Rovers for me. Hirano got the back of his head on it. Nash did find the feet of Haber. Torre keeps his feet, cuts inside. He's got West Knight on the trot down this right flank. Good ball for Knight. And he plays it off the legs of Kindle. Just couldn't get it through. Now the two number eights battling, and just a bit of a push by the youngster. And that'll be a Rochester free kick. So the wily veteran Steve Kindle just got himself in good position there. And yeah, he did well. Kick. He did well to get his body in between West Knight and the ball. And uh, West Knight again in that situation, all you got to do is get in, close him down, make him go back towards his own line. There's absolutely no need to foul, and what you're doing is giving the ball away and giving the free kick. Just keep him going that way, get low, keep him towards his own goal, and uh, you know you're going to win the ball back in those areas instead of giving the ball back. Now they've got it in the Whitecaps area. Carano. A bit fortunate to win it back from Inyonger. And then Pozniak sends a left-footed ball forward for BK. Sancho's there to knock it off and out. Less than three minutes or so until the halftime whistle pending stoppage time. Lyle Martin closed down by Earls. But Martin steps inside, chips it through, looking for BK. Nice little turn by BK. Pokes it wide for Torre. This would be a great time for either team to score a goal as Torre dances away from his uh, former Liberian teammate there. And then Nurse will steal and play it for Zay Roberto, the Brazilian. Earls, the Irishman. And then back it goes to John Ball. Right footed up the line. A little too high for Gregor. Calfin, Tanzanian. And Lyle Martin. Californian. Nash for Hirano. And again, Torre. Pinged wide beautifully for Lyle Martin. Tried to touch it down for West Knight, and West Knight may still get a chance here as Lyle Martin touches down for Calvin. Is he going to rear up and have a go? He does, and just puts it wide left footed. Fans love it, though. Love the uh, attitude from a good 25 yards away. Yeah, certainly worth a shot, that. And he's, he's not quite caught it in Gordon Toyo, but certainly worth a shot. It's just popped out to him there. Lyle Martin sets him up, has a touch, and, you know, just a little off target. But it's certainly worth a shot, keeps him honest. But it's Earls that's given the ball away at the back, and uh, he does better work at the other end of the field. He's defending, maybe need a little bit of, uh, bit of help there, but still a player who's been impressive this half. The other player that's impressed me this half, Peter, is Charles BK. I think he's had an outstanding first half. Everything he's done, he's looked neat and tidy. He's worked hard, his runs have been good. And he's not had the greatest service in the world tonight, but I think he's had a good game. You remember in the early days of his career how wild he would be. He would either send the ball into the back of the net or onto Kingsway Street. But he's really actually improved his game a lot. There's a good turn by BK, and there's a foul called in that. I guess BK with a bit of a shrug and he's furious at the referee. Well, he needs to learn to be quiet because he's done very well again there, hasn't he? Look at his, when you see him turn and hit that, he's done very well. He's learned the game so well. He's a much better professional than he, than he ever was. But look at him, he, he's, he's balanced, he's steady. It might be for a handball, but what a good strike that is. He's done well under pressure to get a strike. He's been the best player for me today for the Whitecaps. Everything he's done, he just looks dangerous. He looks like he's, he's actually turned up to play. So. Well done, Charles BK, in my eyes. I think you've done very well tonight, son. It's Amelia, the 23-year-old from Great River, New York. A few New Yorkers smattered throughout the Rhino lineup. The incumbent number one, Scott Ballow, is a Rochester native. As we approach the very late stages of the first half here at Swangard Stadium, Whitecaps nil, Rochester Rhinos nil on Save on Foods Whitecaps soccer on Shaw. As Zay Roberto steps forward, Chris Posniak launches it deep. Sancho only as far as BK. BK closed down by Nurse, keeps his feet, plays it wide. Two minutes to be added. Knight pulled down by Kindle. That'll be a yellow card. Yeah, it is. First yellow card of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that uh, yeah. the way? 
And West Knight goading in with that. You don't need to say that. That's, that's really not called Oh, and West Knight's given a booking for it as and well. He should be for that. I think that's a bit out of order. I think Stevie Kindle's caught him and it's a yellow card, no doubt. West Knight's actually done well to get past him just a change of pace and went past him. Stevie's gone in a lunging and tackling, and certainly it's a foul of yellow card. Toure, oh, and he just got under it. He made a great little piece of space for himself in the box. But you don't like to see that from West Knight. That's, to me, lack of discipline. You've got your yellow card. Just get on with the game and be as professional as you can. I think to have a go to the players later, it's a little bit unprofessional. Yellow card clashes, issue minute 45 plus. So we're into the uh, two minutes of time added. Now, if West Knight gets a bad tackle and gets sent off for that, I'd be furious as a coach. I'd be furious as a coach for getting booked for that. You know, that's not something you want to get a yellow card for. Again, I've said it many times. If you're going to get a yellow card, somebody on the other side should have a sore leg or something going on like that, but not for yapping and having a go. Not good enough. Poor discipline. Nash will launch this one. Haber with a flick. Sancho on the end of it. Carano. And good job by Nash, who looks way more mobile today. As his ankle looks like it's getting a little bit better. And Lyle Martin tries to find the top of the penalty area, but couldn't find any white shirts on the end of that ball. And away goes Johnny Mignonger. Joined by McFarland, but he's pretty much on his own wide right. And so he keeps possession for John Ball. And then Sancho. Yager with some tricky feet there as he spins Hirano. Good skill by the little number 10. Left-footed ball, and Jay Nolly will be on the end of that, and that should pretty much do it for the first 45 minutes here at Swangard Stadium. Some of the fans head off for refreshments. I think there's been a fair number of crosses in the game tonight, Peter, but the quality leaves a bit to be desired. The quality cross has not been there. Some balls gone in and really uh, should be better than that at this level. But uh, a decent first half. I mean, a little bit of entertainment on either side. There's, there's things happening that keeps the crowd involved. Uh, there's some good uh, individual performances, so not a bad first half. And our Satanta Sports interview at the half with Kristen Reed features Lyle Martin. Uh, Lyle, talking to your coach uh, midway through that first half, he said your team just didn't have any control of this game. How do you take that in the second half? Uh, we definitely need to keep a lot more possession. We're just knocking the ball all over the place. I mean, we had a couple of nice your balls over the top to Charles and uh, Thunder, <laughs> Marcus up top, to but I mean, it's, it's just not good enough. We need to definitely get more of the ball. That's it seems Nicole tempers are flaring Thunder. as well. Uh, you and your son, Steve PA Kendall seem to have words. Uh, how do you make sure you keep B. that in check? Uh, I mean, I'm in his head right now. I don't have a yellow. He has a yellow. So, I mean, I just got to keep my composure and make sure my teammate West keeps his composure because he hey, he's on the yellow now, too. Thanks for this. Good luck in the second half. No problem. Thank you. Lyle Martin, a nil-nil draw between the Vancouver Whitecaps and Rochester Rhinos. Stay with us. We'll be talking to Bob Leonard Doozy and what's happening with the BC Place roof. It's all coming up on Save on Foods, Vancouver Whitecaps soccer on Shaw. The City of Calgary's Southland Leisure Centre offers swimming, fitness and recreation opportunities for all ages. For details, visit calgary.ca slash leisure centres or call 311. Watch the Flight Centre Travel Guys weekly on Shaw TV. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Discover what makes one great destination unique from the next. Flight Centre Travel Guys. See the world in less than five minutes. Yikes. The only thing better than recycling is having a monkey for a pet. Oh man, I love monkeys. The countdown is on with Shaw TV's Power to Win. Join host Johanna Ward every week for profiles and stories that will bring international focus to Vancouver and Whistler. Watch Power to Win only on Shaw TV.
Canadian Doormaster for sales and service of garage doors for residential, commercial, and industrial projects. Overhead, rolling, swinging doors, and more. Canadian Doormaster offers 24-hour service and is a proud supporter of the Vancouver Whitecaps. Welcome back to Save on Foods, Vancouver Whitecaps Soccer on Shaw TV. Still waiting on our first goal. But with us at halftime, Bob Leonard is your president of the Vancouver Whitecaps. And Bob, I'm just going to jump right in. And is it fair to say you were a little bit blindsided by the uh, Liberals' announcement that the VC Place roof is potentially on hold or maybe even scrapped altogether? Yeah, we never heard a word from anyone at the provincial government. We did, uh, we have, in fact, from the time the we were awarded the MLS franchise, uh, been in a regular dialogue with uh, BC Place and with Pavco and uh, our assumption was that everything was going ahead as planned and uh, like most people we heard it through the the media to begin with and uh, uh, initially I thought that it was just a, a rumor but uh, obviously once the, um, uh, the tourism minister uh, commented on it then there 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 is obviously some um, validity to what's being said but the fact that we haven't heard anything and, and we are um, uh, a in a position whereby we are at a, a, a great risk and that we've put up money for a franchise uh, we spent a lot of money uh, from the time we were awarded the franchise and so you would have thought that there would have been some communication from the provincial government along the way uh, even if it was just to tell us and, and ask us to keep quiet about it but so on that note, my, I'm going to operate on the basis that no news is good news. That's an optimistic view. That's good. Uh, how much, though, did the MLS bid and, and the expansion franchise, how much did it depend on this renovation at BC Place? Oh, very much so in that uh, we were after the Waterfront Stadium for a number of years and uh, are still uh, in pursuit of that, although it's on the back burner. But BC Place came to us, uh, or the government came to us and, and asked us if we'd, we'd be prepared to be a tenant in BC Place. Our response was not in the current venue, uh, and then they talked about their plans, and we asked them about actually making it soccer specific, uh, which they've incorporated into their plans. So um, on the basis of, of that, of the entire renovation, that's what we submitted to MLS. And uh, you know, we haven't, all we've done with MLS is made them aware of the fact that there seems to be some concern right now, but that we haven't heard anything uh, definitive from the provincial government. How did MLS respond? Is this obviously a situation they're going to keep tabs on? Is there a threat to the franchise? Uh, they'll just uh, keep tabs on it at this point. Uh, they'll, they're reliant on us uh, updating them as soon as we have concrete information. But as I've said uh, um, from the, the outset, you know, we, don't, we don't have any news from the provincial government. And uh, until we do, we'll assume it's uh, all systems go. We will hope that is uh, true. Uh, let's talk about your team a little bit as you get towards uh, the end of the season. You're obviously in a playoff position right now and a chance to move up the standings. How would you evaluate the way the season has gone for your squad? It's been a weird one. Uh, we've had uh, a lot of uh, on-field drama. Um, we've had off-field drama in terms of the, the thunder and lightning at uh, our game against Puerto Rico. Uh, so there's been a lot of things that have gone on that uh, certainly weren't planned for. But I think what we've done is, is we've with uh, Pozniak and, and Pejic, I think we've shored up the middle of the back. We were giving up way too many goals. Our last four games, we've given up two. And you're not going to get very far in the playoffs if, in fact, and in fact, you're not going to get to the playoffs if you can't, um, if you make, if you can't make sure that you don't give up soft goals. So I think we've addressed that. And uh, ideally, now between between now and the end of the season, we get ourselves on a bit of a run and uh, do some damage in the playoffs. We're not playing particularly well tonight. Uh, having said that. Tater, uh, when I spoke with him yesterday, uh, felt the training had been a little bit lax uh, over the last couple of days. And you've got to, to look at our travel schedule over the last three weeks. And I think some of the guys are feeling some fatigue. So we need to try and get something tonight because, or we need to pick up our performance. Uh, and even if we don't, you know, the most important thing is the result. The last time we played Rochester, we outshot them 24 to four and we lost. So I hope maybe tonight we'll play poorly and win. I, I guess I'll take that every now and again. Well, we thank you for stopping by. Bob Leonard is the president of the Vancouver Whitecaps. And are you the BMO ultimate fan? Log on to bmosoccer.com for your chance to win tickets to the Whitecaps game on September 13th. BMO is, of course, a proud supporter and loyal fan of Vancouver Whitecaps FC. Stay with us. Still plenty to come on Save on Foods, Vancouver Whitecaps Soccer on Shaw.
Truck Accessories has a large selection of aftermarket accessories for trucks. Located at 430A 40th Avenue Northeast, Truck Accessories. Hey, Lindsay. Hey. Have you got any post-its? Yeah, sure. Do you want to go out sometime? Save on Foods Vancouver Whitecaps Soccer is live on Shaw. Catch the new look Whitecaps all season long as they storm the pitch in search of USL Championship glory. Tune in Wednesday, September 2nd, as the Caps welcome the Austin Aztecs from the Lone Star State. Save on Foods White Cap Soccer, only on Shaw. Welcome back to Save on Foods Vancouver Whitecap Soccer on Shaw. You're seeing the logo on Julian Malian's shirt here, and he is the vice president of Evergreen Sports Programming. Julian, you uh, have started the incentive here at uh, at Swangard Stadium, looking to recycle pretty much everything that comes through here. A pretty incredible setup. How has this program worked out this season? Uh, well, how has it worked out this season? It's actually been wonderful. Um, all the stakeholders, so Metro Vancouver, the City of Burnaby, of course, the, the Whitecaps and the vendors here have all been uh, willing participants and, and contributed greatly. But, of course, uh, you know, the biggest, uh, well, the most valuable players to this point are, of course, the fans who are actually uh, taking the time to, to put the materials in the bins that they're supposed to be in. But, um, I mean, the program's done really well. We started with uh, a 10% diversion rate. And what diversion is, is uh, making sure the material doesn't go to the landfill, but actually goes to, well, the recycling depot or in this case, the compost facility. Uh, so we started with only a 10% diversion rate at the stadium, and uh, you know, with four games to go, we're already at 70. Um, so that's good. And so we're trying to get to we're trying to get to uh, actually 95. You know, so we're all so we're well past halfway, and we're hoping we can get there. But uh, so that's going really well. Um, we're also doing some reduction measures on the back end. So um, where we started initially with about 450 kilograms of waste per game, we're now down to just under 400. So, and that's again, thanks in large part to Burnaby and some of the bulk, um, you know, the bulk dispensers with the sugar and the cream and things like that. So that's, that's fantastic. And the other thing is, uh, well, the quality of the materials, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's not just good enough to get it to a, a recycling depot. It has to get there in a, in a manner that they can actually use. And so with respect to contamination uh, is what we call it, we're not, we're not doing too badly. We could see a little bit more improvement there, but all in all, uh, we're very happy. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're very excited and we think we can reach a lot of our goals. This is a, obviously an incredible program. I just wanted to ask how you yourself got involved. You're a former CFL player, actually, with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, just recently retired. Certainly. Is this something that you kind of saw when you were playing in Hamilton and throughout the, the league and the CFL and, and kind of spurred you on? Well, certainly. I mean, you know, being a player, you have a perhaps a. I shouldn't say more keen, but you have a pretty keen understanding of, of the role that celebrity plays and uh, the relationships you can develop with people and things like that. And so um, we actually partnered with the with the city of Hamilton uh, through the through the provincial grant and uh, ran a pilot study at, at Iverwin Stadium. And, and and we found that you know just well putting out recycling bins, giving people the option to divert the material, um, and then of course uh, you know just giving the fans some prompts and things like that. We actually found that was quite successful in, in improving that diver the diversion rate. Um, so in Hamilton, we went from a 15% diversion rate to 65% in just a couple of games. And so we've basically taken what we did there and, um, well, expanded it quite a bit, but basically rolled that out here as well. Yeah. Well, congratulations on a wonderful program and the success you've had. And good luck in the last few games. Thanks for doing this. Well, thank you so much. Take care. And we're going to send it upstairs to Peter and Alan for highlights and a recap of the first half. And Peter, I'm sure you recycle everything up there, right? As always. Of course, uh, the BC Hydro Power Smart first half highlights include a great chance from Sean Pedger. Actually, it was Posniak who launched himself at the ball. Great little give and go here with Mignonger and Andrew Greger. And watch how Pedger sticks out a foot here and almost gave the own goal away off Andrew Greger. And then here's one of the chances for Anzu Touré as he cuts to the end line and whips it across. But Melia diving at it. Danny Earls had a great first half. Yeah, Danny Earls. Look at his footwork here. He's a uh, little ball into the box and uh, actually it's Posnick is no it's, it's Hirano gets a foot to it but uh, so there's three or four defenders really in, in trouble there because he's he doesn't know which way he's going to turn they've got a bit of pace up there but uh, chances either end but no goals as of yet and the province statistics have uh, the shots favoring the Whitecaps but on target only two 
and the corners favoring the visitors. Whitecaps nil, Rochester Rhinos nil. Save on Foods, Whitecaps soccer on Shaw continues in just a moment with the second half kickoff. And now for your Team Power Smart Quick Tip. If every household in BC switched five of their most used incandescent light bulbs to CFLs, the amount of electricity saved would be enough to light 235,000 households for an entire year. Make the switch. Install compact fluorescent light bulbs. And join me on my other team, Team Power Smart. At almost every sporting event, concert, and theater production are empty seats. Empty seats that could be filled with joy, discovery, and possibilities. That ticket you can't use could mean the world to a kid who's never been to a hockey game or a family that's struggling to make ends meet. If you can't use your ticket, Kids Up Front knows thousands of deserving kids who could. Fill empty seats with happy hearts. Call Kids Up Front or visit kidsupfront.com. CIS Canada West football is live on Shaw. Catch the best of the best, battle it out for Western Canada gridiron supremacy. Tune in Friday, September 4th when the defending champion Calgary Dinos and Saskatchewan Huskies kick off the 2009 season under the Friday Night Lights. CIS Canada West football, only on Shaw. The 18th meeting between the Whitecaps and Rhinos. Welcome back to Save on Foods. Whitecaps soccer on Shaw. Whitecaps with the season, uh, sorry, the series lead. Eight wins, seven losses, two draws. They are 5-2-1 and one here at Swangard Stadium. But uh, one of those losses was this season. As the, the players come out of the tunnel, Whitecaps all in white will attack the north goal to our left. And Rochester in gold will attack the south side for the second half. Just going back the last four games, the Whitecaps are undefeated in four, and if I'm not mistaken, they have not allowed a first-half goal in those games, which is uh, good news for Tater Tortoise and squad because, as Bob Leonard Uzi said at the half there, Allen, just conceding way too many goals this season. Yeah, that's always a problem. And again, with uh, Pedgick and Pozniak being at centre-back, I think it is a little bit tighter and a little bit more organised. Hirano, good experience, full-back. And whether you've got uh, West Knight there or uh, Lyle Martin, I think you've got enough there. So you've got a decent uh, uh, back four. I, I rarely, if I get the chance, change the back four. I like to try and keep it as steady as I can. And uh, I think once you get that understanding between them, you know, you're going to get a, a more solid back line there. The less goals you give away, the more chance you've got to win in games. That's fairly obvious. There's a sub coming on for Rochester. Out is number 16. That's Danny Earl, surprisingly. And in is number two. Kwame Sarkodi. And I'm surprised if Danny Earl has come off unless he's had a bit of a knock and a bump because I thought he was probably their most effective player. So that change on 45 minutes. Warren Oka swapped for Errol McFarlane in the first half as well. The Whitecaps stand pat with their original 11. Carol Ann Chenard is in the middle as Rochester huddles up. Darren Tilly looks on. A man who's no stranger to Swangard Stadium and was a big fan favorite. Scott Vallow, the reserve goalkeeper with a shout there and it'll be Rochester to kick off with Manyonger up front having a little chat with Steve Kendall who's on a yellow card West Knight also on a yellow card as we get set for the second half it's Peter Shad and Alan Arrington from Swangard very pleasant night for the beautiful game and there'll be some dew on the pitch as time goes on I'm sure which could make things a little bit quicker but interesting uh, what Bob Leonard Uzi had to say at the half there that the training's been a little slack this week and he thinks that maybe the schedule is starting to catch up a little bit on the Whitecaps who finally get a little bit of time at home here. Andrew Gregor slips it wide. There goes Steve Kendall dashing down the left flank. Sends it into the box for Mignonger. In between two white shirts. Kendall, left-footed ball in the box. Out comes Nolly between three players to claim. And then he sends the ball immediately away. And look at Marcus Haber on the chase against Brent Sancho. It's going to test Sancho out as he shoulders it to the ground. Keeps his feet, keeps it on the park. Haber. He's got Torre following up. Haber will keep. Calfin forced to turn backwards. And Taka Harano will switch play to Lyle Martin. Lots of space for Martin Nash to work with. Well, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the dressing room at half time and hear what they have to say about 
the first half performance. Pique was offside. No, there was a push in the box, I believe. As I was saying, Peter, I'd love to hear what the, the half-time talk was and what instructions the players have uh, going into the second half. No changes have yet, but Gordon Chin's never stopped warming up since the halves began. So you might look to see him come into the game uh, before the end of the game, certainly. But um, so I, I, would, I would be having a go and say they need a little bit more movement and uh, a little bit more enthusiasm for the players as well. A little bit more work. And if Bobby's comments are they might be a bit tired, um, you know, that, that's one thing. But we've got about 5,000 people here wanting to play well. They've got to put out. They've got to get through that comfort zone and uh, really put themselves out and do the job. And there's been a couple of times here and there when Brent Sancho has looked a little bit slow of foot at the back. And Kenny Burtz doesn't look like a speed demon either. And you wonder if at some point they'll bring on Randy and Weenie Bond. So we've seen Marcus Haber certainly test the speed of Kenny Burtz. In fact, it was Kenny Burtz who brought down Haber for the penalty when these two teams met earlier this season. Well, if you look at Bonsu's performance when he came on last week, I thought he changed the game. I thought he turned the game on his head when he came in. And his actions and his uh, performance really uh, deserves a little bit more. He needs some time to play. And uh, if he comes on, I mean, he's excited. Right? Oh, Martin Nash with a rugby tackle there. And if he gets booked here, he's, uh, yeah, he should be booked for that as a rugby tackle. 48th minute booking for Martin Nash, and uh, it all led to... It all came from a square ball that he just played into the uh, legs of the second half substitute, Sarkoti. And Andrew Greger stands off the ball. So the three players now to, to Carol Anshinard's notebook. Actually, Carol Anshinard has been fairly inconspicuous in the game, and that's a good thing. If the ball is floated in, that could be another corner. It is. As a referee, you really don't want to be standing out and uh, making controversial decisions. I think she's had a decent game so far, and uh, all the booking she's had has probably been the right, right way to go. Uh, good referee. We've had her here a few times, and she's always been fairly steady. Let's the players play. Minyonger with the corner from the far side. It's Rochester's eighth of the match. Sarkodi and Burtz bouncing around near the edge of the penalty spot. Headed away by Hirano, right back to Minyonger. Right footed delivery, and that's headed away by Hirano once again. Kindle spreads it, looking for Burtz, who oh, snuck in behind, but it's off and out for a goal kick. Yeah, Stevie Kindle looking for that diagonal ball right at the far side to rebuild the play, but uh, just took a bit of a knock from one of his own players and off for a goal kick. Pedrick. And a good slide by Sarkoti. Minute number 49. There's the second half substitute in for Danny Earls. We're waiting to retrieve the ball here. Lyle Martin shaping up for the throw and right at midfield. Just a little bit of pace lacking in this game. Calvin down for Nash. Spreads it near side, but floats over the head of Perano. Note. It hasn't been the tidiest affair here tonight. His ball rips it into the white cap third. Calvin with a bit of space to move. Closed down by Mignogger. Again, that short ball asked Nash to do quite a bit as Sarkoti tries to get on the outside of Martin. He's got some pace too. West Knight's drive for stride and pushed over. And Sarkoti called for the foul. Uh, he just clipped him as he's gone by there. West Knight uh, did well to use his pace to just get in front of him there. And just that little clip on the legs, and that's a foul, no doubt about it, and a free kick for the Whitecaps. For all those parents with a budding soccer superstar, have a look at Whitecaps Youth Soccer Camps at whitecapsfc.com slash camps. They're running now across Metro Vancouver, Vancouver Island at the Okanagan, and open to boys and girls aged 5 to 12. Flag goes up on Marcus Haber. And again, we welcome those people watching on USL Live. As you can catch exclusive interviews, features, and highlights of your Whitecaps on USLLive.com, the league's official online video channel. USLLive.com, your source for soccer action. And Melia will stroll to midfield. Again, he's not in any hurry. Although I do get the sense that uh, Rochester won't just settle for nil-nil here at Swangard. They'll want to push the affair and try to get a little bit of breathing room between themselves and the Whitecaps. Hedgick up. McFarland and then Lyle Martin. Right-footed and in the air. McFarland again underneath it. 
And up comes Pedro to nod it through for DK. He's got a bit of room. And Haber just couldn't stretch it against Burtz. Who sends it right back into the white cap penalty area for Jane Ollie. Well, the same we've got for this is Peter. They'll, they'll take the ball away in an ambulance. They keep knocking the spots off it every time. There's not a lot of uh, short passing and uh, possession play. It's really just long ball, thump it to the other team and let them get on with it. I think they need to mix things up a little bit and start passing the ball and keeping possession. Zay Roberto, Kindle, closed down by Knight. Those two have had a few going this evening. Andrew Greger then rolls it back for it, Zay Roberto. As the Brazilian finds the feet of Burtz and Sancho. Sarkozy did well to keep his feet against the tackle of Lyle Martin. And Martin again hammers it a touch. Oh, no, kept it in. Well done, Marcus Haber, to keep it in as he walked the tightrope of the far side. DK got a nudge, wins a throw in or a free kick in the center circle. A little bit scrappy right now, and BK certainly did get a nudge there. And uh, the free kick will follow Martin Nash on the ball. Look to play one into the box. Torrey, BK, and Haber all lined up at the edge of the 18. It's Kalfin who's played in. He tries a long range effort, it is on target, but it didn't trouble Melia the way I'm sure Kalfin had hoped. And the Rochester goalkeeper sends his teammates forward. Hammering Hunt right from one penalty area to the other. Sarkody went for a tumble. And Jay Nolly will pick it up. Goalkeeper to goalkeeper here in minute number 53. As Hirano shapes up along the near side flank. Looking for the feet of DK. Taken away by Ball. Calvin, And then off and out. Gordon Chin is about to come into the match. And maybe his energy and eye for the uh, good passing. And I think that's well needed. I think the passing has to uh, start to be a, a factor in the game. And uh, both teams are guilty of just playing long balls forward and giving it to the other team. And I, I think the team that starts to put their foot in the ball and start passing it and keep it, they'll drag people out of the way and cause some problems. But uh, right now, it's literally end to end. Good tackle by Nash against Roberto. Two players who spent a brief amount of time together. And look at the pace of Lyle Martin to step ahead of Kendall. Who said, said he was in Kendall's head, and now he's going to have to try to save a corner, but he can't. Double ricochet leads to the eighth corner, and here comes the substitution for the Whitecaps. And it will be Kalfin who comes out for Gordon Chin. I don't think he's uh, seen it yet. No, he's not quite aware of it yet, but uh, Gordon Chin ready to come in. And maybe wait until after the corner kick and use his height on the corner. Gregor back to Mignonger. Calvin stepped in. Mignonger heads it through. Nurse is offside and a great save after the fact by Nolly as the ball bounces into the Whitecap goal. And that won't count, of course. As the Whitecaps pushed out just in the nick of time. And it is 24. Calf Calfan who will be coming out. And, or is it Lyle Martin? Uh, no, it's Lyle pardon. Martin. Sorry, it's Lyle Martin, 24, coming out. And Gordon Chin's coming in. Now, it'll be interesting how they, they line up. Uh, West Knight will certainly go to right back. And it might be Catherine to go wide right. And Gordon Chin will sit in the middle with Martin Nash. And on the left, he'll be Ansu Torrey. So a little bit of juggling around the, the lineup to get the balance right. But still going with the 4 4 2 and a bit better balance. Let's see if Gordon Chin can bring a little bit more into the game and try and keep possession a little bit more and be a bit more neat and tidy. BK couldn't connect with that as Ball hammers it high, right-footed, into Whitecap territory. Morano shaped up underneath it, only as far as Gregor. And Mignogger scampering away through Ball. Sarkodi on the end of that, but Jay Nolly will clear it back into midfield. Nurse nods it down for Ball with a long diagonal attempt to go straight into touch on the far side. West Knight with a throw in, long throw in to Calvin down the line. And uh, again, when he gets the ball, Calvin, there's no support around the pass it to. Sancho for Burtz. 
Right footed ball into white cap territory. Pedgick nods down for Nash, who's on a yellow card. Haber got his foot up just a little bit high, and that'll be another Rochester free kick. Are you the BMO Ultimate fan? Log on to BMOSoccer.com for your chance to win tickets to the Whitecaps game on September 13th. BMO is a proud supporter and loyal fan of Vancouver Whitecaps FC. We're in minute number 57. Marcus Haber and the Whitecaps trying to break the bagel, as they say. Whitecaps nil, Rochester nil at Swangard Stadium. Kenny Burt standing off this for the free kick. Floats it to the edge of the area. John Ball. Ball headed down, and Gordon Chin with his first touch finds Anzu Torre. Sends it early up the line. Charles BK on the chase. It's going to be Melia who comes out of his box to collect. And the Rochester goalkeeper will send his teammates forward and see if he can launch another ball into the uh, Whitecap 18 yard box. Well, he does. That's a great long clearance. And on the end of it is Andrew Greger. Well, it's certainly end to end, but there's not much in between. <laughs> He'd like to see a few passes in between, but from goalkeeper to goalkeeper. Calvin, who is naturally a central midfielder, now switching to right midfield as Nash swings it to the near side. Can Toure deal with the bounce? No, he can't. And, it's and again, Peter, what I tell my players when things are like this is start playing things simple. And I think they're looking for the killer pass over the top quite. You know, watch too many, and I think just keep it, drag him short, get him short, and then look and play long if you have to, drag people in, but I think it's, it's a little bit predictable. Sarkodi right on the tail of Pedgick, does keep it in, and will concede another throw in. It's been a frustrating game to watch. Hasn't been a whole lot of flow, and not a lot of clear cut chances at either end. It's Sancho. We'll play it back to his goalkeeper. It could be partially fatigue and partially the importance of the game for both these teams, but we've seen a lot of this. Long balls, and again, the flag goes up from Andy Foster. The Whitecaps will have a free kick in minute number 59. Well, I think both teams are guilty of trying to play the long ball over the top, and I think, again, it's, it's so easy to defend against, you know. Uh, the field is wide open. There's, there's lots of spaces between people, but there's not a lot of passing uh, going on. Chin with the uh, long range effort outside that's of his a, foot. That's a good chance, a good shot by Gordon Chin from a distance. But as I was saying to you, I've, I've not seen more than three and four passes in a build up to try and get something going. It's been, we get it, and it's, it's a launch to missile over the top. And again, I think if they just start to mix things up a bit and keep possession, it would have such a, an impact on the game. You saw as soon as the ball was played to Gordon Chin there, how much space he had to work with. Everybody's running away, you know. And, you know, I've got to say it in the game of the strikers, uh, when you're a striker, a good striker, they see your face. In a bad striker, they see your backside. You, you've got to come and show and, 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 and come and support the ball to get it and look to play rather than just looking for the ball over the top. Flag stays down on Andrew Greger trying to get around the corner on uh, West Knight. And Posniak's there to play it for Calvin. Cuts inside and sends another left-footed ball through midfield. Haber couldn't keep possession. And Nurse will touch down for Steve Kindle. Long through ball once again, straight into the arms of Jay Nolly. And now Takaharano. As we approach the hour mark, still scoreless at Swangard. Gordon Chin, second half white cap substitution. BK, little flick on, maybe Haber can try Burtz's pace. And Burtz was there with a good clearance. Mignogger down for Gregor. So Cody. That was a rather awkward challenge by Nurse, who went really hard in on Tori, and that's going to be a yellow card to Chris Nurse here in minute number 60. And Tori looks like he's hurt himself in that one. He's still down, and uh, I don't know whether he's clipped his ankle. You might see it again on the replay, but as he's gone in. No, he just knocked it too far ahead of himself, and then he went two studs straight up on Anzu Turi, who's up and okay. And that was a bit of a relief, considering he had knee surgery this season. Yellow card caution, minute 60. Haber, little touch down at the top of the box, and Burtz was there to lash it away. Then Z Roberto into midfield. West Knight, Calpin, and the Whitecaps will get another free kick opportunity. And there's not a lot of players pushing forward. You've got three near the edge of the box. Chin's made a great little run there. 
Halfen cutting inside onto his left foot. Long range effort again. Straight into the breadbasket of Melia, who tries to play it early and good read there. And here comes Chris Posniak. Left footed ball along the ground and knocked away by Sancho. Mignogger underneath it. Anzu Toure, countryman, knocks him over and uh, commits the foul. A good little battle for the ball there. Free kick to Rochester. Uh, and again, uh, really nobody wanting to get the ball at their feet. They're all pushing forward for the long ball forward. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's far enough. Melia, take this. Launched to the edge of the white cap area. There's a shoulder and good job by Posniak to keep his balance. Actually, it looked like a foul and a handball. One either way there, and uh, neither call from the referee. But uh, looks like Posniak was fouled to me, and and then when the foul's not given, handled the ball. Ball faked going square, and now he's going to try to launch this one into the white cap penalty area. Chin was the first man there, down for Tory, and again just lashed away to midfield where Burks takes over. Gave it away as well. Sarkoti did get there. It looked like Knight was going to win that race. Now Zay Roberto. Slides it through, but too far from Mignogger, and it's off and out. Well, both teams playing the similar sort of style tonight, which, uh, you know, they've been bumping a lot of long balls and not really playing. The midfield's been non-existent on either side, and uh, there's lots of space. It's, you know, normally you see teams compact and make it tight in midfield. It's hard to play and hard to work, but there's so much space in midfield and time to play there. Neither team's taking advantage of that. Another white cap free kick. You'll wonder if Terrell Burgess or maybe Randy Edwini Bonsu will make their appearance here inside the next 28 minutes or so. I'm sure Edwini Bonsu will be featured. As Martin Nash shapes up for a free kick, it's about 15 yards inside Rochester territory. So all the big men at the edge of the Rochester box. It's played along the deck. BK just knocked away by Nurse. Kept in, and that should be a corner. Uh, well, no, it's a goal kick. It sounded like it might have taken a touch there. As the ball was hammered right back in again. A little bit of a savvy free kick from Martin Nash there. Seeing BK with his space and just trying to play a simple ball through. And, you know, sometimes the simplest ball is the best one. And very unfortunate that BK just didn't get on the end of that because uh, it just took a little touch, but a good free kick from Martin Nash. Another long through ball all the way into the penalty area. And again, Jane Ollie happy to scoop that one up. Ollie hasn't had a whole lot to do here in the game. Watch the shot skim over the top was a little bit fortunate when Pedjik redirected a, a shot that was headed his way from Mignogger. And now it's West Knight. Nurse for Andrew Gregor. Gregor chased down by Kalfan, still managed to find the ball through for Sarkodi. Gets around his man, but again, the touch let him down. It's off and out for a goal kick. Jay Nolly taking a quick one, attack of Hirano. And uh, into Chin in midfield. Not a lot of support. Haber for Torre. And off and out from John Ball. Whitecaps will look forward to their next game, which will be a Wednesday night game against the Austin Aztecs before a Friday night affair in Minnesota. Rochester will play in Portland next. And they arrived in town last night. And we've seen uh, Darren Tilly bury his head in his hands a couple of times here tonight. Rochester will be in Portland on Thursday as BK at the edge of the penalty area does manage to keep possession down for Haber. He's got Calvin behind him. There's the right footed ball into the box. Say Roberto stepped in. Haber managed to win the ball back. It's straight up in the air. There's a white cap down on the penalty area. It's Charles BK who's flat out right on the penalty spot. Yeah, something obviously must have happened off the play there. I can't, I, I, I don't recall seeing it. I was watching the other incident where the, uh, the Rochester players scream at the referee for, for the foul. But uh, there's a push there, and it should have been a foul on Marcus Haber. But um, Charles BK is down. He's back up again. No harm done. And it's a long West Knight throw from five yards up into the penalty area. And BK scores! He was down one minute. He was up the next. And the ball's in the back of the goal. It's the 10th goal of the season in all competitions for BK. 
And in minute number 66, Whitecaps won, Rochester nil. Well, BK's in there, it's a great long throw from West Knight. And of all people to get it is BK, he scores his head all the time. And for, uh, for Rochi to not have him picked up, they've had a little bit of a sleep there and let him get away. Near post run he's made, and he's chucked it in the top corner. Typical BK goal, good goal from him. And 1-0 uh, Whitecaps, let's hope that livens things up. Well, what can you say about the West Knight throw? Straight at the head of BK, and he just turned on it ahead of Sancho. Sancho's all over him, but he just got that little piece of, in fact, it might have even gone off his shoulder before it found the back of the net. And in usual Charles BK style, he finds somebody interesting in the VIP section to celebrate with. He had somebody picked out all along. Charles, the 10th in all competitions. And it's been a great season for Charles BK. He's very effective. Most of the goal just scores it with his head. He's very dangerous. He's good in the air. Ball stays in play, at least from the goal line. Knocked out for a Rochester throw. But that changes the complexion of the game a little bit. And boy, did the, the game need a goal. And it seemingly came out of nowhere as BK was down on the ground. And he got back up to score from a long throw. Into the penalty rate goes Sarkodi, beaten to it by Kalfin, who knocks it into midfield. Burtz up against the goal scorer and off and out for some Whitecaps possession here as Anzu Toure will well, take. You're right there, Peter. It has changed the complex of the game. And, and I think Rochester now has to come out, be a bit more ambitious, which uh, will liven the game up. But it could leave gaps at the back for the Whitecaps to expose as well. And uh, now it's a bit of cat and mouse. How far do you push forward? and how far do you stay back, but uh, it hopefully will change the game. Now this is to me what will change the game. I think Bonzu's coming on with a pace, blistered pace that he showed last week. I think that's a great move to put him on. And a nice ball from Nash finds Hirano. Taka Hirano, left footed ball in the penalty area all the way through, Calvin at the back post, Kindle knocks it away. Sarkodi just sends it into midfield. Nash shapes up underneath it, beaten to it nicely by McFarland. John Ball stumbles but keeps his feet. And then Toure called for the foul. Andrew Greger got up with Toure right in his face. Carol Lanchenard has none of that as Toure's right in his face. Then a push. Toure could get uh, the caution for encroachment here. He's going to get at least a warning. And we are going to have an Energy Max substitution here in just a moment as Randy Edwini Bonsu is strolling around at the fourth official's table. And that will help the Whitecaps cause, I think. There will be some gaps at the back as Andrew Greger pelts a line drive to the edge of the penalty area. I think bringing him on as quick as he is, Peter, with a few tired legs uh, in Rochester's back line, I think he could cause a few problems. You know, it's a, He's a great player to have to bring off the bench with that blistering pace. And he's, he's a good finisher as well. He's not a bad little player. It's not just pace he's got. He's got something about him when he gets in the ball. And then a handball called against Errol McFarland. And now a yellow card against McFarland for encroachment. Just a moment ago, Anzu Toure you know, did the exact same thing. There's obviously going to be some complaint, complaints to referee. You've got to be consistent. If you're going to give it one way, you should be giving it both ways, shouldn't you? Mind you, it's uh, a different story when a, when a player gets up and wants to take it really quickly, as here comes the Energy Max substitution in minute number 70. And it is Marcus Haber who makes way for Randy Edwini Bonsu. And if he can make an impression like he did against Miami a week ago, the Whitecaps will be in pretty good shape and they will be level on points with Rochester by the end of the night. Again, a lot of uh, high expectations from this young man. He's certainly got the tools of the trade and he, he just needs to make sure he applies himself. And he's at the edge of the box right now as they Roberto launches himself. Placed by number 17, Andrew Gregor. And then Taka Hirano with John Ball on the end of it. A little give and go with Gregor, who played all of one game in Vancouver and decided that he thought he knew how to coach the team better than the coach did as Bonsu with an awkward looking foul, his first contribution. And it'll be Brent Sancho to take the free kick. 19 minutes from time. And Rochester forced to move players forward with the Whitecaps nipping at their heels in the USL1 table. And the TNT International to send it in right-footed. 
floats it into the box. Out comes Jay Nolly and a punch. Nicely away for Calvin. Can he keep it in? Yes, he can. Sends it forward. BK's with him. And look at Ndweedy Bonsu now. Drifting into that space. There's the little flick on. Look at the pace of Bonsu. Trying to catch Sanchez, uh, Sancho, who's turned and forced to knock it in touch. And West Knight will have another chance of the throw in here. Well, a great little uh, bit of pressure from Bonsu there. Obviously, his pace is a woody to them and uh, knocked it off for the throw in. Well, here's how the Whitecaps scored their last goal. A throw in from the exact same position from West Knight. And Charles BK will be probably marked by two men as he is now. Burtz and Sancho <laughs> surrounding the big 98. Drifting forward is Pedjik as well. Another good throw. Goalkeeper punches. Edwini Bonsu underneath it. Knight with a chest down. Tries to get past one. It's hammered away by Kindle only as far as Nash. Nash. Diagonal ball. Toure underneath it. Ball knocks it away for the moment. Anzu Toure gets to the outside. And knocks it off the legs of Ball. It'll stay in play or will it? Oh, and then Ball pulls Toure down. No and foul. To play on. No foul. I can't believe that. And then not very popular in the stands. Uh, looked like he was pulled out of there and uh, no foul given. Another energy max sub here in minute number 73 for Rochester this time as Tiger Fitzpatrick is coming into the game and he'll replace Andrew Greger. So a little bit of tenacity now in the midfield as Fitzpatrick will be flying into tackles. Gregor is swapped. And Weenie Bonsu with a nice little tackle too on John Ball after the non-call. The goalkeeper with the right foot of delivery way high into Whitecap territory. Sarkodi just couldn't reach it. Calvin on the other side. And he's pulled down for another Whitecap throw. And it's getting a little bit... It's a Stop bit scrappy, and start. isn't it? Yeah, a lot of little niggly fouls and uh, maybe a bit of tiredness as well. I mean, uh, both teams are suffering a bit with tiredness, but really uh, a lot of unnecessary fouls from either side. Five thousand two hundred and eighty-eight fans in attendance here. The ninth straight sellout at Swangard. BK. Pulled down by Nurse, who's on a yellow card, if I'm not mistaken. And this is in fairly uh, good striking range for the likes of Martin Nash. He can hit them from here. And the referee will back up Steve Kendall and company. It looked like it might have been a handball there from BK, but you can see the hand on the jersey and then the pullback there. As Charles BK has been a handful. And Zuturi standing off this as well as Martin Nash. And some pushing and, in the uh, penalty area. Somebody just had a punch at uh, Bonsu, I believe. And uh, the referee uh, in the middle of it all is, is obviously something happened there. Martin Reed's come on the field. And uh, maybe he spotted something. So I'm sure he'll have a word with the referee as well. But uh, a little bit of pushing and shoving in the box. And I think there was a punch thrown, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Well, well it was Edwini Bonsu who got involved. And then an elbow thrown back by Ball. And Ball is a feisty player. And that's the guy you probably want to work if you want to goad him into something. He has a bit of a reputation that way, John Ball. Nothing happened. The referees uh, calmed him down, maybe. But no cards. Nothing happened from there. And we're still waiting for the free kick to be taken. Angle to the right. It is within striking range. It would be a cracker if Martin Nash or Anzutori could find the net from here. And it's taking an eternity to get this free kick off. Uh, there's so much jostling and pushing and shoving in there. It's uh, both sides to a bit guilty, but the referee's got to be on top of this. Torre steps over it. Martin Nash sends it in. A little flick, and oh, it went past Kalfin. It was directed towards BK. Actually, not a badly crafted free uh, kick. Yeah, it's a fairly decent free kick, and I think Martin Nash trying to pick out BK. He's obviously the best target man to hit. He's uh, scored quite a few goals in his head this year. And a little flick on, and uh, Carlton just not really alert and uh, on the wrong side of the ball to make anything about, anything about it. Hedrick stepping up. Carlton again getting underneath it. Kenny Burtz with the header forward. Sarkodi. Zay Roberto. Sidesteps chin. Nurse. Diagonal ball looking for ball who stepped all the way up. And Taka Harano lashes it into midfield. Sancho. All the way through for the Whitecaps Calvin. 
Knocks it off the legs of Fitzpatrick and out for a white cap throw in minute number 76. Charles Biquet's 66th minute goal. 10th in all competitions has the Whitecaps in front and potentially in a tie with Rochester in the USL one table as they try to solidify their playoff footing as Torre rolls it wide for Hirano. Torre making the overlapping run inside for Edwini Bonzu edge of the box gets around Burtz has a go did it take a deflection it did and it'll be a Steve Nash sports club corner from the near side. Yeah, good little quick feet from Bonzu again there. Uh, in the box, dangerous little uh, position to be in there, but the quick feet that he's got causes trouble, doesn't it? And the defenders are they're a bit reluctant to dive in because he's so quick he can get away from him. And the shot take the little deflection and off for the corner. Azar Kalfan to take the corner from the near side as the fans giving it the drum roll. Another substitution about to take place. Mason Trapper getting I think ready that's, to come on. Uh, coming in to try and shore up the back a bit and not give anything away. And the ball goes all the way through the box and out the other side for a goal kick. And it'll be interesting who comes off, but it looks like Trapper will come on and take up more of a defensive role. Than, uh, and I, I would look to see one of the more forward-minded players coming off to try and consolidate the win and uh, short at the back a little bit. Well, he has played central midfield. You wonder if they're going to try to preserve Martin Nash with a game coming up on Wednesday. That's our next match on Shaw. A 7.30 kickoff against the Austin Aztecs. Good header away. Ooh, and a, maybe a bit of a hand to the face. It was a late challenge coming in. The defender's going up really. I don't know, is it Sean Pedgick? I'm yep. not sure who it is, but he's going up with his eyes on the ball and watching the ball. And I think the, uh, the, the forward from Rochester just come right through and clattered him one then. That's a bad foul. That's a dangerous foul. But Pedgick, tough nut, up he gets, didn't need treatment, and I'm right, it's Martin Nash who's going to make way for Mason Trafford. So Martin Nash will be swapped here in minute number 78, another energy max substitution. That's twice in two games we've seen Martin Nash being shoved out of the, the game, and, uh, you know, he's, he's been struggling with a bit of a sore ankle. But um, it's unusual to see Martin Nash sub. We've not seen that for a few years, have we? And look at that. Martin Nash gave the armband to Taka Hirano, who then gave it to Chris Posniak. I think Chris Posniak, probably a worthy armband wearing player here for the Whitecaps, as Mignonger, who's been busy all night but just hasn't managed to break through. Nice little tackle there by Mason Trafford, who shapes up in the middle of the Whitecap midfield now. Ball nodded away by Pedrick down for BK. Nice little turn there, and away comes Chin. Chin. Running at the box, gets to the outside, lays it on the deck for Torre, cuts into his left foot. And then he just held on to it a bit too long, still managed to keep possession. And won it back once again. Torre in a battle down in the deep corner against Nurse. Tries to win a corner and it'll be a goal kick. Just too many touches there for Torre when he had the ball. The, the first time he got the ball, I thought he could have done a bit better. Get past the fullback and get something in the box for the forwards to deal with, but just a Few too many touches there and easily closed down and uh, the, the situation diffused by that. You've got to be sharp, get past them, get the ball in the box. Back into Whitecap territory. Fitzpatrick. Sarkodi. Good overlapping run by Steve Kindle. Into the box it goes. Oh, and McFarland went up and it's in the back of the goal. And Steve Kindle has set up Zay Roberto, two former Whitecaps combine to level the scoreline in minute number 80. It's the Whitecaps one and Rochester one. Well, it was a 2v1 on the left side with Stevie Kindle making that overlap and run. And I can hear him from here screaming for the ball. Play it forward, play it forward. It was a great ball in from Stevie Kindle and really not the best defending in the header. Took a bit of a bounce and bounced right in the top corner. But good cross in there. And again, not the best defending from the centre back. Could have been cleared away. But we're tied at one again. Zay Roberto will admit that that's not his best strike ever either. It almost just bounced off his knee and into the back of the net. And with 10 minutes to go, we are all square. Rochester goal scored by number 15. Zay Wide for Kalfin. Is there another goal to come from this game? Is it swerved towards BK again? Ball nods it away only as far as Torre at the edge of the penalty area. As BK with him, carries on. BK top of the box. Gordon Chin has a go. And it's over and out for another corner as it took a, took a deflection. It took a weird deflection and nearly dipped down into the top 
top corner there, but uh, Gordon Chin again, edge of the box. He's not afraid to shoot. He's had a few shots tonight. Uh, nothing that's really been a big problem for the goalkeeper, but as long as you're prepared to shoot, you've got a chance to score. From the near side, it is Calpin, or will you put it on the other side? Yes. And so Torre will take it on the other side of the park. As the Whitecaps hoping to cash in from another set piece opportunity with less than 10 minutes to go at Swangard Stadium. Anzu Torre with his left foot. Serves it up. Vike again, a punch from the goalkeeper, Emilia. Fitzpatrick on the chase after the clearance from Burtz, off and out. BK slow to get up after that one. I think he took a bit of a clatter from the goalkeeper. Certainly no foul there, but uh, quite a good challenge. And, uh, you know, when you get into the mixer in the box, you're going to get knocks and bumps. And I think Charles BK's uh, got the worst of that one. Edwini Bonsu, good turn. Charging forward. Look at the change of pace, trying to get around ball. Covering is Sancho. Edwini Bonsu not giving up the chase. And forces a throw in as we take a quick check on the field. Martin Nash standing by with Christian Reed. Well, Martin, difficult to see that goal go in uh, and now a tie game. What happened to this team after the first half? What was said in the locker room? You seem to come out with more energy. Yeah, I think we need to pick up our energy, but we need to also keep possession at times. We got into their game just lumping it and uh, chasing it. That's what they do. And we kind of got caught up in that. And we've been playing a bit more second half, which is good. And, uh, you know, we've been playing well. And just to give up a goal like that is tough. But, we, uh, you know, the guy's got to fight on for the next eight minutes. How strange is it to see Steve Kendall on the other side of the ball? Yeah, it's strange. You know, he's doing well. He's playing well. And uh, it's difficult to see because he's still a great player. So, uh, you know, it's tough, but, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for this. Good luck to your team the rest of the way. All right, thanks. Peter? All right, Kristen. Into the White Caps territory it goes. Pedjik with another good climb. Morano down for Chin. And then Torre. Inside on ball, then out. Rolls it along the deck for Edwini Bonsu. Forces the throw from Sancho. Tirano steps up. And how critical will that goal be as we have another Energy Max sub here in minute number 83. Anzu Turi makes way for Terrell Burgess, who can offer some speed and some excellent delivery and on the fresh left side. Fresh legs as well, Peter. Yep. Certainly fresh legs are a factor at this stage in the game. And with Bonsu and uh, Burgess both fairly quick, I think it's a good decision. Torres had a decent game. He worked hard and uh, put a lot of effort in, but really not to any avail. He's not had any clear good chances, but he looked he looks a, a little bit um, dangerous when he gets on the ball. He's certainly got the quick feet, and I thought he had a good start in the game and fizzled out a bit towards the end. Chin. Good tackle by Fitzpatrick. Chin goes in a little too hard, and we'll concede a free kick. Kenny Burtz now sensing maybe that the Rhinos have a chance to win this game as they now speed things up just a little bit. But you do look back at that, and you look at the uh, USL1 table, and you think if the Whitecaps look back on this as an opportunity missed, have themselves to blame as uh, at the moment Rochester sitting in fifth spot the Whitecaps in seventh three points separate them and Taka Hirano knocks the ball into midfield coming back to it as BK nicely directs his header down for Calvin I think BK has been the best player tonight Peter not just because of the goal but in, in all the things he's done he's been very steady he's uh, he's kept the ball and he's played into him he's made great little runs he's worked hard off the ball I think it's been a, a very good outing for Joel's BK and it's been a good game for him tonight. Both the Rhinos and the uh, Whitecaps have six games remaining in their schedule. Whitecaps with two of those on the road. Flag goes up and it will be a free kick for the Whitecaps. Five minutes plus stoppage time left. With a deep-rooted 85-year history in the sport, Umbro is the longest-standing football brand in the world, headquartered in Manchester, England. Umbro supports many of the world's best teams. They are supporting these two teams here tonight. And for more information on how you could be outfitted in Umbro, visit www.umbro.com. As Terrell Burgess watches that one go over the end line, he'd love to be able to just get a couple of chances to get outside on John Ball and perhaps whip the ball in. Never forget Ball's reaction after that 2006 championship playing at home at Paytech Park the Rhinos had a championship party even planned in the hotel we were staying at and I remember he came into the elevator and he said uh, are you guys coming to the championship party <laughs> and I said well actually we're going, we're going to the runners up party down the street <laughs> Whitecaps of course won the game 3 to 0 as it's at the edge of the Whitecap penalty a nice little flick on here's Zay Roberto again 
gets inside the box, and Takaharano just did enough to unsettle the Brazilian. And now it's Gordon Chin with a bit of room to work ahead of him, and Terrell Burgess on the chase out wide. Chin, little ball through. Sancho straight up in the air. Burgess following up. He's got Edwini Bonsu there as well. And the Whitecaps will get the free kick from Darren Tilly. Can't believe it. Thought it went the other way. Yeah, it's a bit of a 6 to one half to the other there, but uh, Bonsu getting the call. Uh, again, his pace is causing problems. He's, uh, he's buzzing around and, you know, he's one of those players that you, you, you don't let him get past you, so you're tempted to lunge in. And he's going to create a lot of fouls in and around the box. Uh, with players like that, you need to work on your set players. You should be taking advantage of this. Burgess is standing off the ball with Chin. Two-man wall for Rochester. Minute number 87. Three minutes plus stoppage time from time, and the team's tied at one apiece. Burgess puts it straight into the legs of Fitzpatrick. And then he floats it right back into the penalty area. Good ball. Touchdown. Calvin will get over there and keep it in. Nazar Calvin with a right-footed ball. Whipped in! And out comes the goalkeeper, Melia. And acknowledgement there from Pedjik, who had stepped forward. And if he was one step ahead of that goalkeeper, it might have been 2-1 as Fitzpatrick turns, sends it forward. And now it's a break on the other way as West Knight puts it straight up in the air. Pedjik confidently nodding it back to Jay Nolly. And it's played along the deck for Takaharano as things liven up here in the late stages. Harano, flag goes up. Martin Reed nabbing Charles BK offside. Well, again, when Takahara gets that, there's only one thing in his mind, it's to launch it over the top. And there's really not a lot of support coming to him to play his way through. So with the lack of support in midfield, they have to play it forward, and it's just so predictable. Whitecaps were 3-1 winners in Rochester back on July the 31st. Rochester 2-1 winners here on May 16th. So the season series hangs in the balance as Jay Nolly watches that bounce straight to him. Long throw for Calvin. Touches down beautifully, but just couldn't get around his man Kindle. He just did enough there. Burks harassed by Edwini Bonsu. Nurse for Fitzpatrick. Close down. Chin. Got Burgess moving forward. Burgess, nice little ball on the deck for BK. BK turns, has a crack, and puts it along the deck. Good pace on the shot, but just not on target. Well, he's missed a target there, but again, he's done the right thing, hasn't he? He's turned and he's opened up, and he's he's had a, he's got an idea where the goal is. He's had a bit of a crack, I think. Again, uh, BK done a great job tonight. I think he's been the best player by far in the Whitecaps team. Will there be another twist to this tale between the Whitecaps and Rhinos? That man is certainly hoping it's a Whitecap goal. That man, the likeliest to score by the looks of things here. Already with a goal here tonight. Put the Whitecaps up in minute number 66, but former Whitecaps, say Roberto, responding. Another Whitecaps throw on the far side. West Knight stepping up. Fans urging the men in white forward. Pushing for... A go-ahead goal. Calvin touches down. Nicely square. Trafford along the deck for Weenie Bonsu. Chin with Hirano outside of him. Hirano for Burgess. BK calling for it. Edwini Bonsu ahead of the play. Swung into the edge of the box. Actually, not a bad ball, too, that found BK. West Knight. Got Calvin outside of him. Knight along the deck for Chin. Chin able to run at the penalty area, and the return ball just a little too far. And again, the Rochester goalkeeper, Emilio, will pick up. And by the, uh, the way the goalkeeper took his time there, you'd think that Rochester was content with a 1-1 scoreline. Well, it's a good point away from home, actually, uh, from Rochester's point of view. And, um, you know, I, I guess the goalkeeper will uh, play for time, but chance here. <laughs> again, <Jane laughs> goalkeeper on. the goalkeeper. And uh, you, you, you had your hearts in your mouth there wondering, is he going to get a flick on? We're in time added on for stoppages, and three minutes to be added. Can Calvin keep this in? It's just too far for him. And another Rochester throw. Both coaches pacing around in their technical areas. Steve Kendall standing off the ball. He was instrumental in the equalizing goal. I'd be happy about that with friends and family and a lot of kids from the Dunbar Soccer Association here on the Dunbar Soccer Association night. Chin. 
Monsu beaten in the air. Goes for a tumble. Mignonger. McFarland. Zay Roberto. Mignonger. Good turn. And look at John Ball is snuck in along the near side touchline. Tiger Fitzpatrick keeps it in, but West Knight is there. Rolls it through for Calvin. Back for Knight. Flows down quickly. Sidesteps his man. Knight. since we've seen some really late game heroics by the Whitecaps. That ball strangely played into touch. And if the scoreline holds, then the Whitecaps will add a point between themselves and Miami, making it a seven-point gap. But they'll stay three back of the Rochester Rhinos. Top of the box, flick through, and Jay Nolly will scoop it up and send his teammates forward. Let's see if he decides to launch one. Edwini Bonsu and Nurse shaping up underneath it. Nurse winning that battle. Hedgick, and again, Edwini Bonsu pulled down and leaves it as the Whitecaps surge forward now. Long ball to the top of the box. BK chests down, a push at the edge of the area, no foul. Fans don't like that either as Kindle knocks it back into Whitecap territory. Pedrick getting under it, but there's Chin, or make that Trafford to nod it down. Zay Roberto, the goal scorer, pokes it back for Ball. And then sent all the way back into Whitecap territory. Well, again, both teams now looking for the long ball over the top, which is probably what they've been doing most of the game, actually. But uh, the long ball looking for the, you know, the last chance. Can we nick a one before the end and win the game? Calvin. Here comes West Knight on the overlap. Is he going to find West Knight? Well, he might have hung on to the ball there a little bit too long, Calvin. But the Whitecaps do get a late throw in West Knight. Can he serve one up the way he did to open the scoring? Well, Both everybody's pushing up. All the big guys are going up. Everybody except for Jay Nolly in the, in the half of the field, uh, Rochester half of the field. Everybody getting towards the box. But all of the Whitecaps players looking to get in. There's the long throw. BK goes up again. It's Nurse who nods it clear. Fitzpatrick underneath it. Knight got a touch, only as far as Trafford. Trafford hooks it back in. And it was actually not a bad ball, but... Poor touch by uh, Pedgick there. I think it's Pedgick that went up. Yeah. And uh, just caught his foot and rolled out for a goal kick. And uh, we must be getting very close to the, uh, the final whistle. And a little bit disappointing for the Whitecaps, who will remain undefeated at the last five games now but we're hoping to maybe close the gap a little bit and maybe climb up the standings. And surpass the Montreal impact as the referee blows the final whistle. Not the most inspiring performance of the season by any means. Whitecaps won, Rochester Rhinos won, Alan Arrington. Yeah, it wasn't a great game really. I mean, both teams guilty of just woofing the ball back and forth up the field. I don't know, one, you know, one team's no better than the other. And I think the draw is probably a fair result and you know, Peter. But um, not as entertaining as you'd like to think for a home game at the Whitecaps where on a lovely surface, you'd like to see them pass the ball and play a bit better than that. So a little bit disappointing from there, but a point to point. They'll take it, regroup and uh, get ready for the next game. We'll have some post-game thoughts, stats, and highlights coming up next. It's Whitecaps Save on Food Soccer on Shaw. We'll return in just a moment. Canadian Doormaster, for sales and service of garage doors for residential, commercial, and industrial projects. Overhead, rolling, swinging doors, and more. Canadian Doormaster offers 24-hour service and is a proud supporter of the Vancouver Whitecaps. The countdown is on with Shaw TV's Power to Win. Join host Johanna Ward every week for profiles and stories that will bring international focus to Vancouver and Whistler. Watch Power to Win only on Shaw TV. No one understands the complexities of the animal mind like he does. It's okay to feel that way. He's the best pet therapist the world has ever seen. His compassion helps patients find happiness. Just like he found happiness by upgrading to Shaw Digital TV with over 200 channels. Because he's the best, he deserves the best. And so do you.
Southland Leisure Center. For information, visit calgary.ca slash leisure centers or call 311. Watch the Flight Center Travel Guys weekly on Shaw TV. Don't move. Not moving. Discover what makes one great destination unique from the next. Flight Center Travel Guys. See the world in less than five minutes. I told you two to get out of here. Save on Foods, Vancouver Whitecaps soccer from Swangard ending in a one-all draw between the Whitecaps and Rhinos as their season series ends on an even note as Tater Torterson addresses his troops. Let's have a look at the BC Hydro Power Smart uh, post-game highlights. And there weren't a whole lot to choose from. A couple of goals in the second half, and here is the goal that put the Whitecaps in front of minute number 66. A long West Knight throw. Charles Bique connecting beautifully at the near post. How many times have we see him do that? Well, a little bit slack in the marking, but then here's the, uh, the equalizer, and it's, it's a really an awkward bounce over Jay, Jay Nolly's head and in. Zuda Berta quite happy about that. 1 1 the score, and probably, in it, as I said earlier, a fair result. 1 1. And Steve Kindle setting up that goal as Jay Nolly joins Kristen Reed. Let's uh, have the thoughts from the Whitecaps goalkeeper. Thank you, Peter. Well, Jay, it seemed like your coach took some time addressing you after the game. What did he have to say? I mean, you know, we didn't play as well as we wanted to, and we didn't finish the chances that we got. And, uh, you know, we were trying to close the game out, and we gave up a cheap goal. Uh, we didn't track down on the on the wing, and um, Kendall played a great ball. And, and uh, I was unfortunate because he kind of mishit the header, and it was, you know, just an unlucky goal for us. Uh, we, we wanted to kind of clean it up and just get the 1-0 win because uh, we'd be tied with them in, uh, in the points right now. You don't want to make excuses, but uh, how is this team doing uh, fatigue-wise? You've played a lot of games and not a lot of nights. Yeah, I mean, I'd lie to you if it, if, if it doesn't get to you, but, uh, you know, if you, don't, if you don't want to get up for games like this, then you shouldn't be on the field. And, uh, you know, once you get out there and start playing, you forget about it. Um, but, you know, it's something we got to deal with, and I think we've been doing a pretty good job. Uh, we need to get some more points with these last five games because uh, we definitely want to be, you know, close to around five and uh, not be worrying about the seventh spot. Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Keeper Jay Noli and the Whitecaps will have a quick turnaround as they play Austin Aztecs on Wednesday. One more quick break. We'll be back after this. Stay with us. Save on Foods, Vancouver Whitecaps Soccer on Shaw. Hi, I'm Dan Sedin. Hi, I'm Henrik Sedin. We're here to talk about Vegas in the city. When you sponsor Bigger Sculpture, you help children with disabilities through the BC Lion Society. Uh, guys, it's eagles in the city. Huh? It's an eagle sculpture. What? When you sponsor an eagle sculpture, you help children. Guys! The countdown is on with Shaw TV's Power to Win. Join host Johanna Ward every week for profiles and stories that will bring international focus to Vancouver and Whistler. Watch Power to Win only on Shaw TV. Save on Foods Vancouver Whitecap Soccer is live on Shaw. Catch the new look Whitecaps all season long as they storm the pitch in search of USL Championship glory. Tune in Wednesday, September 2nd, as the Caps welcome the Austin Aztecs from the Lone Star State. Save on Foods Whitecaps Soccer, only on Shaw. One one the final from Swangard Stadium as the fans clear out a full house of 5,288 watching these two teams share the points and the post-game province stats. Had the Whitecaps opening the score in minute 66, 13 minutes later, a former Whitecap set up by Steve Kindle, Jose Roberto leveling the affair. Whitecaps with more shots, not necessarily all on target. Rochester dominating the corners and fouls relatively even. As far as the USL1 table is concerned, Whitecaps still three points back of Rochester, but now level with the Montreal Impact in sixth spots. Impact with two more games. The final thoughts from tonight, let's rejoin Kristen Reed. 
Thank you, Peter. A great call for you and Alan as well. And our next broadcast is going to be Wednesday, September 2nd. Vancouver Whitecaps hosting Austin Aztec. Stay with us for that game. The kickoff, make no special note, it is 7.30 game, not a 7 o'clock as per usual. For tickets to that game and anything Whitecaps, you can call Ticketmaster at 604-280-4400 or go to whitecapsfc.com. On behalf of the entire crew here at Ed Shaw, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on Wednesday. Good night.